value from the village. Community National Bank loan payment. Uh, interest on Fulcom is $2,022.93. Um, and Community National Bank principal is uh, $29,985.80. Country Home Center Skate Park Site Improvements, $633.80. Lisa Cruz Car Cleaning, $175. Elmore Mountain Bread Pizza Dough, $105. Jonathan Gerard Skate Park Tree Branches Site Maintenance and Repair. And installation of a bike repair to the Trailhead Building, a total of $207.50. Great big graphics, HL Valley grant for site capital improvements, <clears throat> $452.44. Donna Griffiths, skate park minutes, $40.26. Skate park minutes, $69.52. Recording in progress. Island product group, um, bike stand welcome center, $1,520. Johnson Hardware and Rental Rope U Bolts for site maintenance and repair, 457. Johnson Hardware and Rental Finance Charge of 4098. Fertilizer and pelletized something for productions, $2,994.04. Finance charge of 2024. Service charge of 50 cents. I'm really surprised we get all these charges considering the amount of money we spend with them much but um return clover so we returned some clover some clover seed 3598 a finance charge of 443 a clip for 1913 rental of a mini excavator 525 dollars fuel 72 dollars white marking paint 3329 rental excavator 5618 dollars a credit for the rental of $318, a pickup delivery fee of $140, uh, 24 culverts for $5,864.04, a rental of a midi skidster, um, $525, $524 culvert, $977.34, 24 culvert, um, let's get 24 inch, uh, $5,864.04. Uh, mix of clover and rye, $416.60. <clears throat> Moving ex uh, excavator, $175. Plot cemetery maintenance cost, $149.97. Uh, LED bulb, $1199. Ball mums, $6815 for beautification, for a total of $23,156.76. I think we should ask to not be billed for interest if a payment's a little bit late, considering the amount we spend with them every year. Um, Leo's small engine oil, 162.30. The Moyle North modified Superbet uh, Union, blah, 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 uh, $743,474.15. Uh, Monash sand for winter sand, $581.91. Tim Mikovitz, TNL equipment, $2,199.46. Rabbit tracks for skate park mowing, $775. And a second $775 charge, uh, looks like for two different time periods. Robert and Son look, um, lawn care mowing for September and October, $110. Uh, for the grounds mowing, $1,048.68 for the cemetery mowing, recreation field, $1,246.66. Estes Rodriguez, soft, soccer wrapping, $35. Staples business credit for um, ink for the library, $258.96. Folders, envelopes, ink roll, um, a total of $59.74, of which $37.50 due from the village. Thomas Sullivan, soccer ref, $35. Chris Turner, soccer ref, $35. Um, Beamer's retirement, a total of $4,929.30. 
Vermont Green Printing Soccer T-shirts, um, $396. Brooke Havinia Owl Watsula Mural Project, $2,500. Any questions? Was that a refund for the mural project? That's who painted it. Yes. You want to start with orders? Yeah, I don't think Yes. Is that the best use of my time? I understand your time. Reviewing of a, and approving of meeting minutes from September 15th and 19th. You might think that. Those are the ones that John, those are the ones that Eric found a couple of changes and then we saw the reply stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I think so. And then I think I think Evan also noticed the change that I think I didn't make it because I didn't know that right after that. Some, something minor. Oh, I think like the day of the wrong. Um, yeah, it was so. really minor. It just said like Thursday, September 19th yeah. instead of Monday. Minor, minor so stuff. Approve with those changes for both. For both. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Um, select board issues or concerns. I had somebody call me up, concerned about somebody's living in a school bus over by Scribner Bridge. Yeah. Those are years been there. He's been there quite some time. Yeah. The school bus may be new. I don't know. Say the what? School, the school bus may be new, but he's lived in that area yeah. for quite some time. Yes. Yeah, right by the bridge. I mean, it sounds like he's living here. That's, I don't know if there's anything we can do about it, but. Is there anything yeah, we can was on somebody's property and we told them that's picky? I think it's on our property, probably, right? Yeah, it's not so road now, yeah. yeah. We can look into it. See yeah, it. just see what see what's going on. <coughs> A couple of neighbors have complained to me about it. Okay. I also had someone ask me about um, similar situation. A I guess it's a green. Trailer up on Upper Clay Hill Road. Oh, that was road uh, yeah, yeah, right. But, but that's on private land. I know there's a young man who owns that land there. Well, the question that I had was, does, does he have any septic permits for it? And I said, the town doesn't do septic permits anymore. It's the state that issues right. those. So. What are you going to ask? DEC, if they're at least aware of somebody being up there or not. Uh, that was on, I'm sorry, don't think you say the road again. Clay Hill. Road. Road. On Clay Hill. Portion. The trailer's, I always got to put blinders on. It's almost as fast as my car. With it being uh, the first meeting in October, uh, are you and Jason going to get together at some point and hopefully get a letter out to all the people that have stuff in the road right away to get it out of the right away before plowing season? That would be nice. But that's up to you and Jason. We can do that. I have one thing that's not necessarily an issue or a concern, it's a, more of a plug. Um, the Johnson Historical Society is going to a cemetery tour on the 23rd of this month uh, in Whitingdale Cemetery. And there's going to be um, some reenactors. Um, it should be a really great, really great program. And I think there'll be a lot of people there. When they publish something about it, or if they haven't or have already, we should push it out on the Facebook page. The town Facebook has a lot of followers, so it'd be good to be able to push that. 
Um, when you do publish something, let me know, Lois, so I can push it out on Facebook. That's fun. Be more fun if people jump out at you. <laughs> <laughs> we can arrange for that. <laughs> okay. Okay. A, a number of years ago, I was, I was working in White Hill Cemetery. It was Halloween night, and it was getting dark, and there were kids down on the road outside. Mm -hmm. And I was down in, like, literally in the hole. This little kid, I could hear him. So the kids said, Mommy, there's somebody in the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great story. <laughs> Okay, good stuff. Okay. Oh, Rosemary. Did you yeah. have a whole lot. Just that um, ballots are mailed to all the active voters. We, we should have them emailed up when they'll contact the office. Got mine. Yep. Oh. Can I give them up? You get quite a few back. And I've gotten probably over two dozen. Mm -hmm. Yes, you were one of them back. I was supposed <laughs> to be. Hopefully, you don't take your mind every now and then. Well, you never know. Mm -hmm. Can I ask for it back? Nope. <laughs> you can ask. <laughs> you can answer. Ask, you know. You know. Uh, so, in, in, with regard to Treasury's report, you guys had provided us some information last meeting about possible uses of the. Remaining surplus. I don't know that we need to take action on that, but I don't want to track it. Put that on your list, Rosemary. Yep. I'll pull it. Can I ask a question? Please. Yeah. Uh, Rosemary, you so, have you taken action? Plan to take action? And what do you plan to do with that surplus? That's what we need to follow up on. If you have an opinion, you're welcome to share it. It's a nice meeting right now. <laughs> Happy to share it. Uh, first, I'd like to know when we go to the um, No, I gave him the floor. Wait. Oh, uh, Mike, can you? Sorry. Um, sorry, we don't have an audience microphone functioning. So for the folks at home, if you could come up and speak to the microphone here, it would be greatly appreciated. We should put a chair. Yeah. 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 Actually, I could use one right now on balance shingles. So I'm. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think I'm sorry. I oh, that's yes. terrible. But you're not shy about microphones. So. No, I'm not shy about microphones. <laughs> Never have been. Right now, it just hurts to move, it doesn't hurt to talk. Um, ultimately, I'd like to know under what authority you're spending this money. The voters gave you a budget of $3.2 million. So if you spend this $200,000 in some shape, form, or way, you obviously have to take cut something else else in the budget so you can fit it into the budget. Um, if you're talking about putting it in reserve funds, there are specific rules related to those reserve funds, specifically the capital fund. It has to be a line item in the budget that the voters can act upon. So ultimately, I don't see how you can be doing anything with this money except for leaving it on cash in hand for the voters to be presented to the voters on what you're going to do with it come town meeting day, come March. Ultimately, it's a non-issue till March and part of the budget. Okay. Can I take a shot at that? Please. So I'm not sure I agree with you on the reserve fund. We'll just have to read that. So. I'll grab the, the, grab the, the, the the literature and show it to you. Uh, I, yeah, you can show me all you want. But um, with regard to the rest of it, the proposal would be to allocate funds, or reserve funds, to specific purposes, which would then be included in the general budget, uh, which gets voted on and approved by the voters. So I think that meets the standard that you're talking about. Come next March. Yeah. Okay. I mean, ultimately, it sounded like you were going to do something with it now in terms of putting it into reserve funds. Well, voters approved the total budget amount. Correct. Not the individual line items. For Correct. Budget. So you are now talking about spending another $200,000. Yeah. 
which means it's got to come out of some other line items in the budget because you can only spend $3.2 million. Well, we're not talking about spending it. We're talking about allocating it. That's spending. At, that well, is spending. Well, just to be clear, it would be allocating it to reserve funds or to operational budget. Either way, you're right. It goes toward our um, next year's budget that we propose to taxpayers. It's the budget you are in. You're currently talking about spending it this year and you have a limit. We're talking point. about putting it in funds, not spending. There's a difference. It's allocating, not spending. You can't put it in the funds without voter approval. Okay. If you want to send me the documentation, that would be great that you're referring to, like specific statute you're referring to. I can uh, show. Well, you don't need to right now, Walter. If you could email it to me separately, we'll take this up in our next agenda anyway. Because we're not going to decide on or even have the discussion about the allocation. It's called Article 12 that the voters approved in 2000, okay? These are articles that you should be aware of that the voters have passed to put limits on the select board. And I've had this discussion with you before, different select board members. And ultimately, this is items that should be left in cash on hand and presented to the voters in March because that's the only authority you have. In, two, in 2012, you said? No, this was in 2000. It was Article 12. In 2000. Okay. Uh, it. it was actually passed three, March 6, 2001 for the 630 budget. Article 12. I think the ultimate question of Walter has brought this up uh, in the past is whether or not the select board has the authority to, what authority the select board has to do with surplus funds. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think he has a very strong opinion on it. So it's sure. called bring it to the really voters. I hear you. Okay. I would, I'll go pull it up and maybe. Even and you'll ought to pull up all the others because all the others have limits too. So before you start putting money in reserve funds, you better be clear you're following the rules that the voters have put bumpers on these. I hear you. Okie dokie. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we'll follow up if you could have the numbers for us next time. And if you can help actually with the historical understanding of what the voters asked or didn't that we proposed. Um, okay, any other issues or concerns? Okay, uh, let's see, review planned purchases. We have no planned purchases for the next two weeks, uh, over $1,000. Okay. Uh, next up is the added agenda item that I just asked about. So Lisa sent an email to um, Brian and I about a fun run. I don't know the date of the fun run, unfortunately. I but October 30th. Yeah, uh, October 30th. that's what I have too. Thank you. So I could have waited, but that's okay. Um, since we're talking about it, she basically is saying if the state doesn't give a, us the permit, for using the rail trail for the fun run if the if it could be held on one way lane. Does anyone have any objections to that? It essentially has signage and all the things you would expect. Hmm. Seems like we've done that in the past on the one way lane. I think we've used a combination of the two in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where I got beat by a 12 year old. <laughs> Do you have any objections? No. Okay, it sounds like we support it. Cool. Checking it out. Okay, next up, continued ARPA discussion. Um, I invited some folks to join us from the planning commission. So I think Paul and Rob, you're the two, right? No one else here is on the planning commission. Okay. But Jeff's interested in it. Yeah. That's okay. Everybody should be interested in it. Um, yeah. The reason I call you two out very specifically is because we did invite you to the conversation and want you. I want you to be able to speak freely with the board on this particular topic. Um, I just want to make sure folks can hear you. So if you would like to sit with us, you may. If you'd like to stay where you are, that's fine too. Um, but if you could just come to the mic when the time is right, um, that would be great. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Don't move, Rob. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So I've thought a little bit about, so everybody has seen the list. Everybody on the board has seen the list. The planning commission has seen the list of ideas that we've come up with. The ideas were created by the meeting that we had back in June, as well as um, the results of a survey that have gone out since. Um, and they're all compiled together. Um, what I think maybe we could do in terms of what's in here is if there's anything that seems like particularly high on the list, like everyone has something that they, they think is very important. Maybe we could talk about some of those items and just raise them to the top of the discussion. And I do think that we should go through the full list and maybe we don't have time tonight. Maybe we keep that allocation of 10 minutes ish, maybe a little bit, maybe 15, um, but cross out the things we just think aren't part of this. Yeah, please. Sorry, sorry, we just quickly, um, for the record, say how much money there is and deadlines, I think it's in the time That is accurate. Uh, the total amount of funds, Rosemary, do you know that offhand? We have a receipt from all yet that's close to six hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred. It's around six hundred thousand once all is said and done. And we've received two payments today. We just got a new payment. Correct. By twenty twenty four, we have, it has to be spent or allocated. It has to be obligated. Obligated. Okay. That's pretty short time. It is. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Sorry, that's six hundred thousand. That's time village. Uh, no, time. that's just time. Just time. Okay. The village has their own allocation and okay. uh, functions entirely on their own. Okay. So, do you want to go through them line by line? And just I'm thinking we should. Quick? Yeah, do a really quick strike or not. And if and if anyone objects with a suggestion, just speak up. Um and we can discuss. So number one is industrial park. I think that's high on the list. Industrial park is one of our highest that we've discussed historically. So we'll star that one. Yeah. Uh recreational development. Can you speak loudly since there's lots of moving. Well, it's hard to go by numbers because they have unique identifiers, but I guess recreational development is the second one. How's the board feel about that? I don't think we should strike it. I think we should keep it. Okay. I don't know what it means. There's some other ones. I think it links to like the pathways and everything, but we'll get to other items. Uh, upgrade internet service in Johnson. Board member thoughts. Um, I think we should strike this one personally. I think that everyone needs internet at this point. Uh, I think it should be, we're not gonna be able to do anything with 600,000 yeah, on that a item. Pretty significant effort underway with the uh, right. Right, right. So, so, are we all in agreement? Strike three. Yeah. Okay. All things infrastructure regarding maintaining, upgrading, purchasing of water, sewer, utility, road, heavy equipment, small equipment. Um, any of those things are village. Uh, water, sewer, and utilities, yeah. Uh, heavy equipment, we do have an equipment plan, small equipment, there's one for that too, underneath our normal budget. I'm not sure what it means as town manager is a must, but I think we could strike that one. Um, so there was a discussion about expanding water sewer at one point. I think there still is a discussion with the, wasn't the planning commission looking into that? We did make a recommendation, I think, uh, some time ago. I'm looking for the support to consider basically for that process. Right. So, board members' thoughts? It wouldn't be a high priority. Right. I would strike that, certainly. Okay. Down, down uh, to town manager is a must. Yeah. Uh, I, I suspect that they're thinking village. I, I suspect some of these are too. Uh, use the money to make 
the town more physically attractive, create pathways to connect some of the village locations, for instance. Buy more trees for the arboretum. Uh, arboretum. I'll put in a gazebo benches, a uh, few picnic tables, create a better pathway for Pearl Street to the Arboretum, as well as a new pathway leading to the Guy Hon, where a walking biking bridge will connect to land on the other side near Union Bank. Uh, and then it says, I'd also favor covering, uh, converting the field use of Tuesday Night Live into a real town park with trees, flowers, gardens, branches, picnic tables, and such. Let me just split those into two. Yeah, and I think it um, works with like number nine too. So we could split that into pathways and conversion of Tuesday Night Live field, correct? Yeah. Um, board members' thoughts. Wow. I think we should keep it on the table. The pathways one? Yeah, the pathways one. I don't think we're going to convert Tuesday Night Live, but I agree. generally recreation and pathways. Okay. Uh, lower property taxes for those making under 50000 I don't think that's our job. I don't know that we have any authority to means test and set scales for property taxes. We could lower taxes, property taxes overall, but I don't think that we have the authority. Our funds could be used for that. We don't have access to people in Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but ARPA funds could be used for lowering property tax. Yes. Any, any op, anything we spend, any operational expenses that we use the ARPA funds for would necessarily lower property taxes. So if you cut the highway by like $500,000, that would lower property taxes. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think. I don't feel like that in and of itself is something we would I, use funds for, but I guess, does anyone have a differing opinion? I think so. I think the very next one is use, use as matching funds to leverage grants. To me, that makes a lot of sense because this is this pot of money is highly unusual in that as much as it can be used as a match for other grants and anything that we do, we should get the maximum dollar conversion as possible. I agree. All agreed. I agree. The next one's another one that's offsetting property taxes. I think we covered that already. Correct, yeah. Duncan and Mark? I agree. Okay. Uh, integrate non-motorized hiking, biking, and pedal trails in Johnson into an interconnected system with publicly available maps and supporting services. So this kind of ties into trails again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pathways. Um, yeah. Um, clean up graffiti under the bridges and install security to help to deter vandals where tagging is frequent. Thoughts? Pete? No, no. Infrastructure for Jewett property. We covered that in item number one already, right? Yeah. You're keeping score, right? Yeah. Solar power speed monitors because drivers go much faster than 35 mile an hour speed limit. Thoughts? No, I do not like that idea. Because like they're solar fast. powered or because <laughs> they're speed? <laughs> well, you don't get a ticket, it just tells you if you're going too fast. I know, I've for them. Uh, <laughs> Does anyone disagree with that one? I, I you know, I, I, I think in general that that is a good thing for us to be doing. I'm not sure that ARPA funds are the best. I'm not sure that's the best use of ARPA funds. It's a good item, but we have to realize. 600,000 doesn't actually go that far today. So we're not going to be able to do every item. I say we strike it from this list, but if opportunities present, we, it would be a good thing to do. What do one of those units cost? Do you have any idea? A few years ago, they were the two units that we had installed was around 15,000. Uh, the sheriff paid for most of that. For the Was that the that mobile have. units that you're talking about now? No, no, no the, the two that, that we have board. installed oh, okay. now yeah. that we are trying to get an electrician back to 
repair. Half the time they seem like they're non-functional. Gotcha. Uh, next item. So are we okay with striking? Strike. Yeah. Duncan, you good with that? Uh, update and maintain our buildings. It says village garage. I think I I think we strike village garage, but maintaining buildings I, is a good item. We should keep it and discuss further personally. That's all we're doing tonight is sorting, right? I don't, I'm not favor of it. If that's ongoing maintenance. That doesn't seem like something we should be spending our money on. Yeah, uh, Brian, at one time there were potentially going to be some ARPA funds available through the state for buildings and utilities and infrastructure. Are you aware of anything that's happened in that regard? I am not intimately familiar with what's going on, but there are some additional building modern, modernization grants that are available as part of this. So I, I would say it's a better fit for if, if there are additional funds. Okay. A uh, year round facility for farmers market and small businesses, for example, see Moncton, New Brunswick market. That would put Johnston on the map. Thoughts? I don't, I don't see us doing that. I, I tried. Okay. I started that farmers market. We had a bunch of years, but I didn't do very well. Two years. Status assessment on the progress of the light industrial park leading to a plan of action. That was already an item that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, There's some good additional thoughts related to that in this moment. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think whoever compiles it is going to strike the whole bullets. Mm -hmm. Just the ones that we say mm -hmm. to strike to narrow it down. Are we all good with that? Yeah. Uh, sculpture, walk, and park. We've got sculpture bases on Main Street right now with no sculptures. Yeah. We should or are they invisible sculptures? They could okay. be, yeah. be yeah. non-fungible tokens. So are you proposing to strike it, Mark? Yes. Duncan? Yeah. Beth? Sure. Okay. Irrigation system at the Arboretum. Uh, estimates can be furnished. Yeah. Beth? No. Strike it. Uh, use ARPA funds for law enforcement to offset annual increase. This was a specific request from the sheriff's department. Really? <laughs> of course it was. It's not the only one. <laughs> it doesn't seem like you should be using one-time money for ongoing expenses. I think that's pretty stressful. Unless there was a very specific request for the use of those funds, like a piece of equipment or there is also. Is that also here? I didn't separate it out. Okay. Uh, there is a separate request, not the same request. For, but for funding two cars, well, up to two cars um, across the three towns. So up to 120,000 for three cars split between the seven. Can you uh, split between the three the three towns, which would end up being a cost of fifty one thousand for Johnson. I'm going to need a lot of reassurance that that's actually going to buy us something. A car. It would buy two yeah. cars if all no. three towns. Two cars. Actually, buy you any increased law enforcement. Oh, I see. So yay or nay, strike it, keep it for now, discuss more later. I mean, we're... Which are, are we on the one The cars. Yeah, we're on the, the ARPA cars. one it's not for law listed. enforcement and cars. I'm not crazy about using that. Me neither. Yeah. Sounds like that's gone. Eric probably wants an antique car. <laughs> Fix the old Talc Mill House. Uh, that building does need some work. It's jointly owned. I think that goes back to Duncan's note about the facilities maintaining our buildings. Yep. Uh, medical transportation upgrade, secure network of services, including emergency transportation. Is this an ask from NEMS? Our aging population. Again, it seems like using one-time money for an ongoing thing. Because it's not a town-owned entity. It's a contracted right. service. Yeah. 
we can't actually upgrade them. We could just force them to want to upgrade where they could increase our bill to spend more money. Jeff? I read that as being just transportation. It, it literally says medical transportation, transportation upgrade. That to me means so vehicles. It, it's a, first word is medical. Yeah, medical transportation. Right. Yeah. Which is vehicles. But it's not transportation as a whole. It's yeah. medical yeah. transportation. Uh, what are the board's wishes here? No. Similar to agreed. The sheriff's department. Gotcha. Yeah. Upgrading the audio visual system for meetings. That ARPA money, I think we should probably do it if we're getting complaints. I, agree. I don't think it should be. We don't currently thing. own what's here. These are CCTV. No, no, GMA TV. GMA TV. But, yeah, but most of the equipment is GMA TV. We have a little bit of, of it is ours. Mm -hmm. uh, but we partnered we with them because a bunch of the equipment that we bought wasn't very useful. And to get multiple microphones working at the same time, we need a mixer, we need some experience with it. So we've just partnered with them to provide that. Okay. Uh, I have a note on this one to upgrade the equipment, um, but it seems like this might fall into the other grant opportunities. Are we taking public comment or are we just waiting until the end? Go for it. Real quick. So we need to upgrade your internet. Thing, so that people are using internet during the meetings, internet service. Our network. Yeah, we yeah. do need to upgrade to our what, network. The yes. internet to the whole building. Yeah, yeah. to the whole server or whatever. Um, are we interested in keeping this for ARPA funds or keeping it as a... No, I think it should be a general budget for item. And, and I also think that it's possible it could be an ARPA, a different source of ARPA funds. Gotcha. So for this list of the large ARPA fund that we're discussing, we're proposing to remove it. Okay, Beth, thoughts? It's fine, I agree with Charlie, though the network itself is a different beast. Yeah. And I think we should consider the network itself for ARPA funds. Yep. Uh, so the network itself for ARPA funds. The network what? itself using ARPA funds. Yeah, how long is, it, what's the lifespan of the network? Every five years you upgrade it? I almost need to come up with a, equipment plan for it yeah honestly but that's, we're, i'm just trying to stay on topic You're doing great. for now You're doing great. if possible use care. the money to attract a few good eateries to the town <laughs> make it a competition offer two grants of three hundred thousand dollars a piece to restaurants who would relocate to johnson and give tourism a reason to make johnson a destination worth the trip would we be able to give the money away I mean, it's an interesting question. I mean, I, I we've claimed the money as lost revenue, which mostly frees it up for us to do anything we would do with other revenue. And but before we gave it away to a private citizen, I would want to double and triple check to make sure that that's allowed. But I. I like the idea of this, not necessarily for food. I like the idea of it for business. So for tonight, could we strike this item, but to the compressed list, you could add potentially giving grants to yeah. relocating businesses and we can discuss it further. I'm just gonna call it business and rewrite this. Okay, bit. business, um, it's just a compressed list. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with You're you. good for that? Yeah, yeah. 300,000 okay. seems like an aggressive ask too. I, I think that's a... You know, smaller incentive grants might be. Yeah, you know, micro. We're not getting into the idea. details. Uh, mitigate flood zones and dredge the river. That ain't gonna happen. You know, <laughs> if they can get the state to agree to it, we can keep it on the list. Um, Mark, you're good with removing that. Yeah. Beth? Okay. Just Industrial park development that's been covered it. multiple times. Offset water and sewer payments for residents who continue to pay their bills during COVID, even though they lost their jobs or had their hours reduced. 
those are village utilities, so I'm proposing we strike those two mm -hmm. items. And there were programs available. There yeah. were, yep. But yeah, there's pretty expensive uh, thoughts. Okay. Uh, assist with renovations, uh, renovating the existing rental housing in Again, the town. That's not, that's not, a, I mean, the state has got a bucket of money coming out for rental upgrades. Duncan? I would not see this as a good use for Beth? I think we have a lot of not good rental housing units in our town. How far is 600 grand going to get us? Six Less than one building. I'm curious about um, the planning commission on this one, too. Either would the planning commission use... like to keep that one for the condensed list? <clears throat> the rental uh, unit. I'm curious about your thoughts on rental unit. I For this particular line, item number nine on packet page six, um, I'm hesitant to strike it quickly because I think we have a really not great rental housing. And if we had higher quality rental housing, it could um, change the dynamics of our town. So for making a compressed list, I'm okay with keeping it on the compressed list, discussing more in the future. That's two and two. Can we just keep it on the list for now? Because okay. we're going to provide you guys. Sure, we're okay. Perfect. Thanks, Paul. Uh, plant large trees along Main Street. Don't we have trees along Main Street? They're not large trees. They're not large enough. Oh, that, no. would, that would require <laughs> large bowls and large equipment. Are we keeping it on the list or not, Mark? No. Duncan? No. Beth? I guess it's getting removed. Uh, support various development opportunities. Uh, matching grant funds was already brought up. Uh, more time for economic development, which is kind of hand in hand with a lot of stuff. Uh, it does say position and marketing for Johnson, scoping study for future bridges across the Moyle connect to connect Old Mill Park and Skate Park, enhance rail trail, railroad street with a bike lane, also work with the V-Trans to get a bike lane on Route 15 between Railroad Street and the Moyle Valley Rail Trail across or opposite there are a couple of, of Johnson environmental that are different than what we talked about so far. One is the scoping of the bridge. Yep, that and would be another item for the, sure. Uh, the other split I think I see is the enhancing the rail trail yes. with Railroad Street. And then with Route 15. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm saying the scoping study for the bridge could be removed because we already covered that earlier this year as a board. Mm -hmm. I agree. Even in the priority list? What do you mean when you say it, that? It was brought up at a board meeting. Okay. Um, Old Mill Park, uh, so that's the bridge all the way. So enhancing the Moyle Valley Rail Trail with the renovations of Railroad Street. Can we keep that on the condensed list for now? Yes. Okay. That was. Do you have something you want to say, Paul? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it ties into the path. So that was less than half of the list, and we ate up our time. Do we want to finish the remaining? five pages at our next meeting or do we want to go down through one more page really quick what do we want go on, keep going one more page okay save some of the money to use for matching funds for grants we already got that. um yeah walking bridge either from old mill park to jollies or school street to main street uh we covered the old mill park to jollies one thoughts on school street to main street over the memorial We've bridge. already got a pathways, so I, I think it. Yeah. Well, gotcha. Okay. Uh, Recreation Senior Teen Center. This only works if we're already attracting people to the area in some manner. It's a great idea, but I agree with the attraction piece. I don't think we're there yet. So strike that one. We... More so, try doing this with teens. And... Okay. Uh, ecologically informed recreation plans for talc mill property or Gomo town forest. Uh, the way we manage our town forest. Keep. I like this one. I'll bet you I know who wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good with keeping that one on the condensed yeah, list? Yeah, and you too, Duncan? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Community pool and dog park. No. I like dog park. 
idea. I, I like they're... Dog Park also. Can we... Pools are really expensive to run. Really expensive. I wanted a water park. <laughs> well, yeah. I, want, park. I want a, I want a ski slope on the uh, behind the town. Um. So I'm keeping Dog Park. Uh, I'm asking Duncan. Duncan thoughts. We're using ARPA funds. The more topics we take, the skinnier it gets. We're here a lot of good topics. I, it's a good idea, but I'm not. It wouldn't be high on my list for ARPA. For use of ARPA funds. Okay, so we got two and two. Everybody agrees with removing the pool. I guess the dog park stays on the condensed list because we're tied. Uh, gravel paths, gravel roads uh, to the storage area in the Arboretum. Estimates pathways. can be furnished. Part of the pathways topic. Yeah, already somewhat, gone. except for the road, but that's actually already going in. So are we doing one more page? Yep, one more page. Okay, rec trails yeah. of all Are to enjoy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Three is a really easy one. We can remove that, right? Uh, marketing of Johnson. Update the website. More fun welcome Jeez. sign. Yeah, this is a lot. Okay, so we all agree on the website? Yes, website. Uh, a more fun welcome sign I don't think is a great use of ARPA funds. I think the overall marketing strategy is good. I don't think we need to get into the specifics. Okay. Of their... So we can keep item number four. Are you okay with that, Duncan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Create some kind of mixed entertainment space in town. Place for live music, dance. I feel like we have that. Uh, gallery space, reading and lectures, and other cultural events. Again, give visitors a reason to make Johnson their destination. I think we've got that going on. Between the studio center of the college. So you're proposing strike it or use our funds, Duncan? Okay. All right, we're striking it. Uh, fine tune and expand improved water filtration systems to filter out pharmaceuticals, toxins. Uh, village. You guys shot that one down really fast. Uh, recreation village. infrastructure project. Just uh, pathways, pathways. Yeah, pathways, offset electricity payments for residents right. who continue village. to pay. Beat that one. I'm not even getting them out here. Assist owners of dilapidated buildings in the village to bring them up to code or buy them, fix them up, and resell them. I like that one. For use of our funds? Maybe. I don't know if you can I tell, but I'm interested idea, in dwelling. I think it's a great idea, but I'd strike it for our funds. Okay, three down, one up. I guess we're striking it. Uh, add public parking on or near Main Street. We talk. How long have we talked about parking on Main Street? That was, that was a huge. We don't have anybody striking. going to Main Street striking it. It was part of the project. It was, it was a nightmare. How about doing a, a bypass around the village? Remember that one? Okay, next. All right. Uh, assuming COVID uh, blah, blah, funds for COVID losses have already gone through the general fund, allocate some. To support town infrastructure. I think we already have the audio video in prior. Yeah, we yep. do. What about a sidewalk between downtown and Westcombe Road? Gosh, I think it's very interesting, but uh, yeah, the village right now owns all the sidewalks. Right. Well, That's kind of where my head goes yeah. to. When we, I was on that Main Street Commission. Were you on that? Doctor? So oh, I was on that. Where, yeah. we were gonna put a, just left. Boardwalk. I, I feel like we could remove. Well, that was that was one of the phases that got cut because of the overall cost of the project. There right. was a plan to put. I gotta ask: Are we keeping what that sidewalk for ARPA funds on the condensed list or not? We could talk about it if we keep it. I don't think so. Okay, we're removing that sidewalk. We're done. We're getting really close, guys. Everybody, we got thank one you. One more page to right. Uh, signage, really nice signage uh, for various places of interest in our town. That would pe that would go into the marketing, right? Okay. Which we've already covered. Uh, pursue Greenway River Walk along the Guyhound River. Sorry. Could that tie into paths? Right. We just yeah. have a lot of bullet points we're for the paths. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Public pool. This might attract families no. to the area. I think we already shot that down. And we've got plenty of public swimming here. Town gotcha. property improvements. Town property improvements for the Holcomb House and communication system. That's a constant contact discussion. Um, future use of Holcomb House is yet to be determined. Meanwhile, 
there have been some recent renovations uh, related to energy efficiency, handicap accessibility, and interior decor, assessment of the general physical condition and maintenance, status of the property to restore the building to a safe place and to identify areas that could be preserved for the historical value. I propose we don't do anything with that one. We just leave it there for now because we're going to talk about this more in a few minutes. We're, we're talking about use of ARPA funds specifically. Okay. So are we keeping it or not on the condensed list? Again, I think it's a great idea, but I, I'm i pretty sure that there is going to be another pop of ARPA money in this one. It is kind of buildings, right? Yeah, so We've already so covered. So item number one. Strike, 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 strike. Okay, it's yep. gone. Number two, develop communication plan that indicates you said that was the constant contact thing. Yeah, I think we got so, that message. I don't think we have this actually. Um, well, it we does. It, we can wrap it up with the others. It does say it needs a state of the art video audio. Okay, townwide landscaper, gardener, and greenhouse. Use of our funds, Duncan. Not for okay, not for ARPA. 16 on page 9 is stricken. Industrial Park was already covered multiple times. Uh, place what, a place where everyone is welcome. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so. Do you have a long-term vision of Johnson? Well, we covered use of our funds. Vision is kind of a different topic, right? It is. I mean, it is, I think actually vision we should come back to. So, um, so the vision can come back unchanged for our condensed list condensed when we list. go to yeah. revisit yeah. that at our next. So I think we should have a task for everybody. And by everybody, I mean the select board specifically and the planning commission that um, if we... <laughs> Paul's smiling. I'll smile at you, Matt, yeah. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, that if we could all think about what a vision means to us, like what the vision of Johnson means to us, and help that inform our next steps for choosing ARPA usage, I think that is an important part of it all. And I think your question is still Yeah, I'll take the action to condense it all and I'll share it out with everybody. And then when we next get together, we can touch on vision and then use that vision to inform further discussion on the individual items that are condensed. Yes. Yeah. Are you thinking of a vision like, so where do we see Johnson in five years, 10 years, 20 years? Mm -hmm. oh, well, okay. Yeah, exactly yeah. that. Yeah. That's my thing. That's my thing too. That's very good. And as I think about the total use of NARPA funds, I, I think it's really important to get our the prioritization list that we put together and think about that in context of that prioritization right. list as well. Good idea, Dr. Okay. Yeah. I mean if that exercise is going to mean anything we should use it. Yeah. yeah. Pull it off the wall. Yeah. Or off the shelf. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, Sounds good. Uh, I guess one more planning commission thing. Thanks for coming, first of all. And secondly, um, if you want to continue to come, please, we would love for you to. Uh, if you want to have a rep from planning commission or call your rep, you know, whatever, uh, please just let me know and we'll make sure that the rep is always informed as to what's going on. But otherwise, I'm happy to communicate through you or you know however you see fit. Awesome. Cool. Uh, did you have any other thoughts or concerns about our rapid fire? I uh, know I think I trust the email uh our working friend was it uh I admit myself included this the survey going out. So our concern was how many students in the town actually saw the survey and had text for it. We knew it was coming out, but still had to just kind of things out. So I don't know if you've ever heard from people in town that they want to be able to know about it or people in the beer that everybody know about it.
Yeah, it was on Front Porch Forum. It was on Facebook. We talked about it in one of our select board meetings. Yeah, we had paper copies at the window uh, at right. the office. Yeah. I mean, it probably was just summer months, which probably were not the best months, would be my guess. Uh, but so if there are any are any other big ideas that we're really missing out on, feel free to send them my way. Happy to hear them. Everybody reads the minutes. <laughs> Surprising number of people watch the videos too. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Yeah, it is good. I agree. Okay. Uh, thanks, Paul. Thanks uh, for joining. Let's move to the next item. Historical Society proposal for Hol Holcomb House, which is why we have the majority of the crowd here tonight. Uh, so, um, and this will start on page 12 of the packet. Um, Mary Jean, do you want to come up and actually come sit in a chair next to Brian so that you're close to the microphone? That would be awesome. You'll see the back of your head on the camera. Okay. Be very cool. <laughs> It'll be very cool. Okay. 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 You're welcome. Okay. okay. So did everyone get a chance to preuse yes. this and look at it yeah. at all? Yeah. And do you want to go down through the whole thing, or just just the no, just the you're, you're a, are you a just the high ex teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Why can you tell? Um, I don't know if you wanted to go through the top on the next page. I know we've got the cover sheet. I just put that on just to you know, break it up, but um, the top. It just talks about the intended purpose of, of what we have. We talked about that part. The top of the bottom part, the, where it says the wishes to occupy the second floor of the Holcomb House, we are appreciative of the select board's action to remove the tenants who had caused damage to the upstairs apartment. We feel the first steps in our occupation are. So we had two kind of steps. And the first one was that assurance that the select board is not going to move to place tenants in the upstairs space. Access to even a small one bedroom apartment would place restrictions on the society's use of the space. Place our collection in jeopardy and inhibit public displays and programs. Uh, we request a firm yes or no vote from the select board for the historical society full use of the upstairs. That's the first point. We haven't been able to get, we really haven't been feeling that there has been a firm yes or no vote. I don't know. I think there's been conceptual vote, votes. There hasn't uh, been a firm yes or no vote. Right. Uh, there were certain asks that the historical society needed to access the space for. Um, I, are you not accessing it now? We're not accessing it now because we've been waiting for a firm yes or no vote. Number one, one is that if we if we did start doing any work or started working on any kind of project or working on this kind of thing, and then all of a sudden it was decided that no you know, we're going to use the upstairs as an apartment or do something like that, then we feel like we're kind of spinning our wheels. So when we left this last, we left, um, we left it as we needed to do the further cleaning, mm -hmm. which we've since done. Um, not perfect by any means. We all understand that. Uh, and we wanted to understand like what the historical society um, thoughts were on usage, like right. what it would mean for the income to the town to offset the rental loss, what it would mean in terms of 
uh, what you would need to do for usage of the second floor, how you would intend to use it, and what you would need to do to get it to a state in which it was usable. Um, and were you planning to do anything more than storage? And I think that's where the... I think that's where we kind of lost that part of it because when we ended that last discussion, it was said <coughs> that um, when we knew the tenants were out and we knew it was going to be cleaned, then we would be given, you know, we'd go upstairs. But someone would tell us that it would be okay to go upstairs. Yeah. And I hadn't, we hadn't heard anything at all. And the day the tenants left, we were in a meeting that day. We were in a, you know, historical meeting that day. And we noticed all the trailers out there and stuff going out. So I immediately called Brian and I said, it looks like the tenants are moving out. Are we gonna be able to get upstairs? And he said that we had to do more, it had to be inspected by you guys or something. Had to, somebody had to go upstairs and look it over. And that's kind of like the last time we ever heard, heard anything. Otherwise, it was through the grapevine. We didn't really hear a direct piece that that was what was going to happen. So that was the that was the, I think that was a big stumbling block. We really didn't hear any anything from that point. Rumors and people saying there were rumors in town that someone thought well it was going to be a, you know we're going to make it into an apartment. We needed the revenue that kind of thing. And so we heard all these rumors going on, but we didn't hear any direct. So you came to the, well, the, okay, we have talked since then, because yeah. the Historical Society came to the select board about additional cleaning, which we approved. Yep, we um, so that has happened now. So it now, has. like, if we were to say yes today, if, right, what would that mean? What would your next steps be as the... I think our next steps are what we're talking about there'd be some professional inspection and advice for bringing the space up to code for storage and staff use and then display space. So you are talking about display space. We too. are. Does that mean people going up, public, the public be, going upstairs? You know, and that's the piece that we have to look into. So I don't know how, I know. That's so I think this might be worthy of two separate motions. Can I speak or no? Uh, you can make a motion if you okay, want. Okay, hold on a second. Mark, did you finish your thought? I did finish my thought. Okay. Before motions, what is your question? If he wants to, I kind now of. What's your question? Motion. Well, this select board could give the Historic Society a firm yes or no, uh -huh. but we cannot bind any future select board. No. So in March, You'll have to come get it again. That's why we have to do an MOU with the library every year. Do you have a question about usage, though? My question is, uh, they're requiring that we will not do a, put a tenant in the space. And item number five says that the Historic Society expects to contribute and share the cost of repairing and renovations. That's an unknown. But... Essentially, I guess the ask is that the town will not use that as an apartment, but we don't know what the town is being expected to pay for this. Well, no, that's true. I don't know if we do exactly. We haven't gone through that whole piece yet. One question I have, what happened to the, the rental money that was with that? Like, was it, I thought what? it was going to go into renovating that building i thought that's what initially we had that had been talked about if, if that was, that in the was agreement. initially a, it was in the agreement it was in the i agreement. just see that it said that the rental income was going to go to the town go to the agreement let's look at it yeah um regardless there is, there is plenty of expenses that I have been dealt with down there yeah there's plenty more evan <laughs> so you're, you're saying that there's plenty more expenses well there'll be and, plenty more well, yeah hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. counting topics and between yeah. the use between the town town of johnson shall receive the revenue generated by the rental units and the j HS will pay an agreed upon sum in lieu of rent, which generally share shall be equal to an agreed upon portion of cost of the utilities. Uh-huh. Which we did. 
Yep. Uh, I don't see anywhere in that sentence where it says that the town will take 100% of the rental revenue and put it in doesn't, a separate doesn't, account. It doesn't say 100%. I think it was an ag agreement, but you know, I didn't do this, so I don't know. Maybe it was a gentleman's agreement. I wasn't in I, in the room at that time, but... Probably weren't a gentleman. <laughs> I, I probably wasn't born. <laughs> well, um, Regardless, I, I do think that the town has put a good sum of money and time into that building. So I, I, a lot of people talk are talking about the rental being a revenue for the town. In what I look at, it's more of cost reduction, but it's not a revenue that's coming in and being used everywhere willy nilly. It helps offset the costs that we have on a yearly basis. I, I might be off, but I'm just thinking, just going back to that, the monies that were paid, the rental piece, wouldn't you, wouldn't anybody assume that the money that you would get from the renters there, or at least some of it would go into the building? For the I first don't five think... years though, Mary Jean, the, the rental income went to offset the loan payments. Okay. For the building. But then the loan was fully paid back, right? Uh, didn't we pay that whole piece back to you guys? The historical society didn't pay it back to the folks. No. And either way, um, I don't think we should assume about where the money is going to go because the money goes in and out of our budget. So there are specific line items that it'll go in and out of. And if it was going into a reserve or something bigger, then there would be a specific reserve that that income would have gone into and that's not the case it goes into general budget well that could be a discussion i mean we can get deeper into that because i don't know think too much about that either I, i'd like to but i don't know it. but i think the part that i'm here for i think the rest of us are here for is a general yes or no are we going to be able to do something upstairs in that building you know we're doing storage usage and then eventually at some point display, but we're not, that's not going to be for quite a while. I'd like to make one motion, and I suspect there may be more than one. My motion would be not to rent the upstairs to any tenant until the Historical Society has come back with a plan for future use. Okay, we have a motion. Can you embellish on that plan? Does it need to be a financial plan or just a plan? Uh, you know, you could say that we plan to put a hot tub in there and that could be a plan, but it doesn't, does it need to have numbers or is it just a conceptual plan? That might be part of the second one. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion, do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that. Um, I think that um, after being being in that place, I don't think we want to be in the rental business. And I feel comfortable with that aspect of it. Um, where I see more discomfort is bringing in a professional to do code. You know, if we're on the hook to make that up the code for public access, that's going to be a whole nother thing. And it's not, I don't know, I don't know what that entails, but I can tell you those stairs aren't up the code, you know, for, pub, for public access. It may, you know, if we bring in a professional and the professional says that second floor, I don't want even the historical society going up there, then we have, then we have to really think about it. But as far as getting out of the rental business, I'm very happy. After going through that apartment, I we're still in the rental business. Not renting that apartment. That specific one. That specific it's the one. one that you don't want to be. Renting. Yes, I do not want to be renting that specific. That's why I'm say second the motion. Okay, so we have a second. Is there any further discussion? I kind of asked for mine up front. <laughs> It would have to be renewed first meeting of 
the new board. So put. It wouldn't be any. You can't hold a future board. Okay. So do you want to amend your? Would you be interested in amending? We'll put a timeline on there. So. <clears throat> We do more than multi year contracts. Right? Um, automatically, automatically. We do. I don't think it's necessary. Okay. We have a motion in a second. The motion is not to rent until we have a plan. Not to not to rent to a third party until the service society comes back with a if they could say detailed plan for occupancy of the second plan. Which implies the historical society could never come back with a plan and we could never do anything with that space unless there's an emotion. But as to Evan's point, um, I don't think you can buy one select board. I don't think this select board can buy another select board to a never ending. But it'll get forgotten. What's that? It'll get forgotten. It would if there was an ND. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Okay, two eyes and a nay. Eyes have it. Yes. So I think that takes care of your bullet item number one. One. Two. It does, I guess. Yeah. Um, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, means yes, we're yes. going upstairs and we're going to check things out. We're going to say what's yep. and happening. Maybe have a professional inspection. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would, you know, my second motion, if I was going to make one, I don't know that it needs to be made, but. I, I, what I would expect that the board would need in order to make a final determination would be the detailed plan, including costs. And if there are uh, proposals to share those costs between the town and the historical society, break those out. Break the, that down. The rationale as to right. why you feel it's appropriate that the town would share right. some of those costs. Right. Uh, and, you know, to Mark's point, um, I know full well that there's going to be some compliance issues, mm -hmm. um, but it's, I don't think you can, I don't think you can figure that out unless you have, a, unless you hire a consultant to do that analysis. Right. Um, and come up with a plan. And, you know, to me, that plan, if, if, if the intent of the historical society is to use that for public access, mm -hmm. for public display, that it has to be fully compliant with right. codes and standards. And you're not going to be able to figure that out unless you hire a consultant. You know. Right. So no. The people at the state, fire and safety, electrical, they're not going to look, you know, you can, you can invite them and tell them what you want to do. Right. They're going to tell you, we need to see a set of schematics. We need to see a set of plans. Right. You know, and they will yeah. approve or deny those plans. Right. So, that's the next step that in my mind is needed. And that, is it safe to assume that you folks have all did that for the first floor? I mean, I know yes. you have I'm, ramp, you I'm have, you have ramps to get yes. in there. Yeah, we did. And it looks like it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all it's yes. smoke Friends detected. Wow. Well. Yeah. Howard Romero did much he of did. the actual design work. We had another person okay. do estimates. Yeah. And he, and I think that's the piece of when we get to our next meeting is just to find out names of people. Who are, you know, All right. Well, I think we need to understand stuff. like what it is, like what the vision is for usage of the second before you even get somebody in doing your assessment of what would need to be upgraded or updated. Uh, I think that like how you plan to use it is also interesting to the board. Beyond saying that we want to use it for storage and displays, you want dis you want distinct displays. You want distinct. Well, how is that? What do you? I I think that I could be misremembering. So for what that's <laughs> worth, but I think I heard that there was no immediate plans for displays, and there was an immediate no. need for storage. Like so, more for that? storage. Yeah. So what yeah. does that look like? And what does the timeline look like? 
And if that's one phase, the first phase is just to get in there to store what needs to be done to, to allow for that to happen, right? Secondly, beyond that just <clears throat> storage, what does it look like beyond that? And you know, what are the next steps needed beyond that in terms of a phase two of a plan? And are there additional phases? I don't know. Right. Um, that's what I'd be curious. To I think it was. Then. I think it was interesting that you know, the other part is that we've heard too that, and it's pretty much so that people. We didn't go upstairs because all of a sudden we heard this question from somebody that said. Um, are you sure that, you know, I'm curious, do we have access, do they have access to the top floor? And I'm thinking that's where we were like, okay, question, what, what do we have to do to have access just to go up to the top floor, take a look around, report back? Because that was my assumption at the beginning. We were just going to go up and look around and report back to you as to what we were going to do, but then it got lost. Yeah. Um, so. so at this point, I think there is probably consensus from the board. If we're looking for a plan, <laughs> then in theory, they need access. We can access the top floor yes. and look it over and, and check it out and see what we, you know. Well, there was already a motion they have. We yes. did. Yeah. Well, they have yeah. access. Okay. Right. Just making sure. Well, okay. As part of the okay. plan, I would like an updated yearly cost analysis sheet. Uh -huh. which I brought up before so on all the costs, the yeah. one that you made. So is this a time to bring this up or is it not? There seems to be a question as to whether, okay, maybe it's not, you know, I don't my, know. my piece is like, it just seems like there's a question as to whether or not we want the historical society in that building doing anything at all. I think, So is that true or is that not true? I think the board wants the historic society in it. And Good. I don't think any board member wants the town to be a landlord. No. Um, well, you shouldn't but, speak for the board. You should speak well, for yourself. Right. Mark has said it. <laughs> but how much have we put into that? I mean, they put a lot of money into that and we've done a lot of work on our own. We've done a Certainly, lot of that stuff. Uh, it so costs continue like to rise. And everybody has always told me that this was no cost to the taxpayers. It um, is becoming a yearly cost to the taxpayers. And the ask is that the town share in renovations to remove the revenue that was covering costs. So, so, so far we've gone, I mean, I haven't been part of that for forever, so I don't have all the details, but so far they've really done a whole heck of a big job going, doing the capital fund, you know, over three hundred thousand dollars that we worked really hard to get that in there, and then we're paying. You know, we said with seventeen hundred when the tenants were there, we'd go up to seventeen hundred for utilities when the tenants were in there. Now we're saying we pay. I can't remember what it was, thirty five or something like that, thirty five hundred dollars or more for utilities, knowing that hopefully nothing is going to have to be done upstairs. Nobody's going to use that stuff anyway. Hopefully. Nobody's going to creep in there. So I think as part of that plan, though, I think the point about having that bit of spreadsheet is a good one because it is part of the, the total. What? I don't know. The spreadsheet's good. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. You know, because we know that, that cost, up, but, like we all know from heating our homes, that right. utility costs that cost are rising. through the roof this year. Yeah. Well, and, and it, it's getting cold, and I don't know. Somebody's going to have to address the plumbing up there. The, the last I knew, there's running water up there, uh -huh. the potential for water to freeze. So that needs to be addressed. And I don't know whether we address it or you address it, but it's got to be addressed. Um, is that we should soon. be addressing it? They're not, right. they don't have, act. that is not their second floor at this point. Right. It's right. the town's. So we should address it. Well, the whole building isn't really ours. Right. But we've just granted them access to get in well, and, you have and the to, as, to, to assess it. We're, right. We've said we're not going to rent it. You have access to assess it. Yep. We need to make sure the water gets shut off and that the building is safe for for the historical society. Yeah. You know, we, didn't, and we, we can't. And I know. think that's... You know, I, I would think for the protection of the building. We should right. 
we should have a minimum amount of heat up there. But the thermostat instead of 50 degrees. I, I don't think we should just shut the thermostat off up there. Oh, we should certainly close the windows. <laughs> you know. But yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you, okay. Doug. But if it were your property or your property and nobody were up there and the thermostat was at 50, you'd still shut the water off. If it's doable. If nobody's, if nobody's going to be there. You're then talking then just the sinks and the showers. In the pool. I mean, so we can have the grounds, I forget his name, but the grounds person shut those things off, I would imagine, and share windows are closed. Like, Donnie <clears throat> Yes, thank you. Donnie's not there. <laughs> See Donnie there in the back. Hi, Donnie. He's probably the only one. Yeah. I never connected the dots. They're connected. Oh, right. Yeah, I yeah, think that, RV need, any that freeze, needs to be addressed. Course. That needs yep. to be addressed sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So okay. let's okay. do nice. that. Sounds good. Thank uh, you. you know, to okay. your, Thank you, Mary. To your question, Mary Jean, I, yep. I want to say, as one board member, I absolutely, probably no surprise, absolutely support the work that the Historical Society has done. It's done a fantastic job. Uh, my, my suspicion is the whole group feels that way. Well, there are, and there are more presentations coming up. We're doing a cemetery presentation on the 23rd, where we're going to have people right. doing projects there. Walk into the cemetery and listen to someone tell you a story about one of the people that were there. There's plenty of projects coming up, and we're working. The, the only other thing I wanted to tirelessly. say is in your specific figure, you specifically say that you do not feel that a small one bedroom apartment in that space is mm -hmm. usable or functional. I would just ask you to keep an open mind on that as your as your hired consultant looks at that. Um, that that would certainly be a way to help offset some of the total costs of that building. Mm -hmm. And Evan's right, that building is going to cost some money over the you know, over the period. Of okay. So I think the whole point with this was it's a yes. We're going to go upstairs, we're going to look around, we're going to say Call somebody in, do a little more detailed stuff, and get back to you with reports and spreadsheets and whatever else. See what you can realistically use it for. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, well, it's, yeah. That's the big question. Okay. Yeah. I'm um, just a general ask is like, I heard rumors said a few times. I hate rumors. I hate rumors, bro. I hate gossipy stuff. Uh, I think that's why we're as here. As my personality. <laughs> So if you hear rumors, and I know you did call me, but if yeah. you do hear gossipy rumor stuff, like just don't react to gossipy rumor mm -hmm. stuff. Just call me. I'm happy to take the call. Or help me go to the courses now. Whoever right. the rumors coming from. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Next right. up I is Vast Sterling Snow Riders. All right, no changes. No changes. Thank you. Maps are provided. Wrong. Wrong. Right, folks, thank Any you. changes? Yeah. Uh, 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 change to what's written, or is it shown on the maps? There is no change to what's written. Okay. And, just, and your small changes? I'm assuming that we can go to five years' date to have the chance not to change the date. Um, you can't find it five years yeah it, we can write it down but it won't be binding to the next select board <laughs> 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 oh, negotiate for us all right so what's your small change uh the small change is uh we right now we travel oh road and we have to go to the next drive uh, so it's, it's like three or four hundred feet actually gotcha uh, 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 Motion to approve vast landowner provision form uh, as presented with the permission. Well, the form doesn't have the. Right, the form is the end of the form. 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 Okay, we have a motion. <laughs> Do we have a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Okay, next up. That was easy. Yep, discuss the fifth. Yeah, I'll send you a signed copy, Rob. Uh, I'll just give you one right now. Yeah, just All right, can we move on to the next item while you're signing? All right, so a uh, discussion of the status of a fifth public works position. So at our last meeting, we had questions about how much was, what was budgeted uh, for a fifth public works employee. Uh, so detailing that we have a total compensation uh, of $93,804 um, budgeted for the that position. Uh, for part-time help, Another question was how much part-time help we have. We have 200 hours for a total of 4,000. 44,368. Right. For what? Uh, part-time help. 200 hours. Oh, right. Well, the comments in the wrong place there. Yeah. It's easy to read. 4,000. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah. yeah, it should be 44, not 4. Right. Whatever that four thousand four hundred four thousand six dollars yeah. and eighty cents. Um, let's see. A uh, little bit more detail about our budget. Uh, we projected total wage and time off uh, for the year to be three hundred forty thousand forty eight dollars. So far, we've spent fifty nine thousand dollars. That's not a great indication because a significant amount. That's something wrong, Rosemary. I don't think that should be forty-four thousand. That's a lot of money for two hundred hours. Yeah, I think it's. I'm kind of. I think I'm thinking that, but I'm also trying to not right. stop the whole meeting to yeah. do math in my head. Yeah, but that needs to be right. That's part of the part of the discussion. All right, so for two hundred goes into four thousand. Yeah, it should be four thousand, not four hundred, or right, not forty-four thousand. So there's four thousand four hundred and thirty. Should be four thousand three hundred sixty-eight dollars. Gotcha. Here okay. first four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our total expense for. Uh, wages and time off is $340,048. We've spent so far $59,216. Um, Doesn't mean anything. Not especially because the balance of that funds is not evenly spent throughout the year. Do those hours include an estimate of the overtime hours? They do. That's the primary reason in which oh. it won't be even. We'll spend most of our money on wages during the winter. The highest percentage will be like Q2, Q3, you're saying? Yeah. If... Q1 is going to have the lowest spent because they have worked some overtime hours, right? but little. Um, insurance is a little bit better in terms of making predictions. Um, we've spent... 18,000 out of 89,000 so far. Social Security, similarly, 26,000 total. We spent 4,000. Retirements, again, pretty similar. Um, so we have, we have room in our budget for a position. Is exactly how much room depends on particulars of person we hire. Right. Somebody more qualified with more experience, their wages are going to go up. We hire somebody who's experienced and has a family. Our wages and our insurance goes up. It would be possible for us to break the bank on a potential hire. But we could also end up less than this, and we could end up in a, a good spot. And we, we cannot make any decision based on any of the factors you just talked about. No. Right. Yeah, we can't hire somebody we based even on be talking uh, about it. We should be talking about a range. Yeah. Um, right. So the five communities uh, that were consulted, what were those? That was what Pittsford, Windsor, 
Cambridge, Hyde Park, and Bradford. Um, and what about, so Cambridge and Hyde Park, what was their breakdown? Like as far as the amount of employees? They uh, Hyde this. Park has four employees and uses seasonal assistance. Uh, Cambridge has five employees. <coughs> uh, they're actually currently at four, but they have, they're in a similar position to us. They normally have five because of hiring changes. They're currently at four and they're hiring a fifth employee right now. And Windsor and Windsor, Pittsford, and uh, Bradford. Bradford. And those all had? Uh, I believe it was Pittsford that has the strictly four employees um, and they're satisfied with their four employees. Uh, the Cambridge or the uh, all the other ones, Windsor or four plus uh, seasonal, four plus seasonal. A lot of them had, uh, you know, a water and sewer utility, or you know, they might have a landscape position, or they might hire somebody seasonally. But gotcha. They had four regular employees plus assistants. And does this take into account overtime? I did not ask them about what their overtime hours were. No, sorry. In any of your budgeting, does it include overtime hours? Yes, it does in all of it. Okay. Uh, and the other question is, if we were, so let's say we posted a position tomorrow, uh, we're still looking at having somebody in for three quarters of a year. So the high end of that range for three quarters of a year, does it still break our budget? The it could break our budget it, it, with the no on the high end. I'm just saying range, high end. Yes, yeah. yeah. so we could so break the budget with highly qualified, highly qualified, many years of experience meets our skills just qualifications. High end of the range. That's all. Yeah, yeah. That's right. The, the high end. It could break our budget. <laughs> I don't want to talk about any any family or anything like yeah. that. <laughs> you mentioned it right now. So it's not high end of the range. Five communities. Um, did you compare the total miles of highway? I compared the miles of highway for a couple of them. I didn't have road information for everybody. Um, and not everybody got back to me uh, about road information. Don't, do we have, don't we have access to the VLCT salary, the big salary survey? We that do. I don't recall seeing road miles in there. I didn't, I used that one for developing these are comps that I've used for other purposes. They have similar uh, populations, similar populations, demographically, uh, census tracts, they're similar uh, in median income. Uh, they're, they're either our neighbors or are demographically similar to us. Uh, and a couple of them that I know the road miles also had similar road miles. I know Windsor has more paved than we than we do. They, they have a different balance, but they're... They also have a downtown in, in no villages. So I'm assuming that Bradford and Windsor in particular, certainly the highway crew is out there taking care of the sidewalks and the parking spaces downtown, et cetera. I would expect so. Yeah. And, in, we we don't have that situation currently, but we are also running a gravel pit, and that's that's a hard comparison. Or at least we're operating a gravel pit at what fifty percent of its capacity, or something like that. We're not operating. Not it. currently. There's uh, a lot of variables, though. Yeah. Because the more hills you have, the more storms you have. You know what. We, well, get a, you, we, we get a pile, we get a pile. We get a pile load more snow than Windsor. I can tell you that right now. In Pittsburgh, I'll have snow a month before them and a month after them, as far as physical hours. Um, and M MRGP compliance. <coughs> I don't know where they live, but. Well, everybody in theory is subject to the. Everyone's going to get there. Um, but at what rate? Yeah. Uh, road closures. Hyde Park has four plus a seasonal, and they had to cl close roads during mud season. We didn't, but I think there was a lot of hours worked. 
will, will adding another person cut down on overtime hours in general? In theory, it should. Um, when we changed from strictly four people and added a fifth position, we reduced the total number of overtime hours that we budget for. Um, it did not eliminate overtime. It didn't really even come close to eliminating overtime, uh, but it was a reduction in the amount of overtime hours that we regularly used. Currently- One of the biggest benefits of the fifth employee was being able to schedule employees to cover the weekend you know, to set up the schedule that allowed for kind of a rotation. And, you know, partly it was, you know, it was a nice benefit for the employees because instead of everybody being on call all the time, they at least had a schedule. That didn't mean that they had a big ass snowstorm. Everybody didn't have to come in work, but. That's true. And that, that also has a secondary benefit of um, if they're not scheduled, as often they don't need to be on call, they can also take more time off during the winter. Right. And if they can take more time off during the winter, that means we have more time available during the summer. So we we can get a lot more done uh, during the summer. So we're, it should be a, a, a reduction or at least a return to uh, you know, a lower amount of overtime. But the biggest benefit is, you know, you, you've heard Jason say a couple of times that um, they're having trouble with work or they can only do certain tasks because they only have certain number of people available. And he's taken one day off in the last year or something. But um, do, some, do you know, that, do, if it snows on the weekend, is that automatically overtime? Yes. Yes. So Sunday is overtime. Saturday is Saturday overtime. and Sunday are, is automatically overtime. And they start at four in the winter. Yeah, four. I think it's four o'clock. So if they're out after lunch, it's overtime because they have to plow their entire route before school buses. No, I understand. I just didn't know that Saturday and Sunday were automatically overtime. Why would that be? I mean, I thought part of the proposal of having a rotating shift where people were going to cover the weekend hours would obviate the need for those being overtime hours. I thought that was part of the whole point of going to the five-man crew was to be able to schedule people. It, it, it certainly used to be that in, in this might be a case of the highway department wanting the best of all worlds, <laughs> but the, the basic idea is if you've got a schedule and you're on the schedule and your five days is Thursday through Monday and that happens to encompass Saturday and Sunday, why should those be overtime hours? That has never happened, to my knowledge. That hasn't. What's we did happen? examine a couple scheduling options that would break up the crew into basically two shifts so we could have we wouldn't in theory, we wouldn't have to pay overtime for uh, if they have to go back out in the afternoon and we could also use one of the shifts on the weekends. Um, the advice we got from the Public Works Department was that uh, that that didn't really work for them, that, that would they would not be able to complete the work in a reasonable amount of time. Um, when there would be times where there was only two people on uh, to drive the trucks. I think a lot of it depends on how you schedule and, and the foreman plays a huge role in the overtime. I, that, that's, that's my it. sense is, you know, I, I was asked, this all, all came up because of what you're bringing up is, Somebody's schedule, if you know, if I work at IBM and I work on the weekend, they don't automatically say, Oh, that's overtime. You, know, you might get a differential in pay for working the weekend. Right. But of not course. necessarily at overtime rates. Right. So and I'm just well, getting, I'm just getting up to speed. And I think overtime the, these folks probably want overtime. They built it into their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And 
that's something as managers we're man running the show here. We have to decide how much overtime is appropriate. It's a long discussion or something that the town could consider in contract negotiations. Where where are we in that? And is that spelled out? It's looking there? pretty good. Oh, we can't really talk about um, where we, we are. Can't really talk about it. So. Yeah. But you raised the point. Um, regardless, I guess. Are there more questions? Is there more information that board members want? Are they... Um. So this person will have to have a a CDL for sure. And uh, no, not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. They don't necessarily have to have one. We our salt truck uh, is under the weight limit for a requirement for a CDL. Oh. That, that it would limit the. Does that have a plow on it? Yeah. It does. It would limit the what they could do. They would, you know, somebody who doesn't have a CDL can't use any piece of equipment there. They can only use certain things, but there are useful things that someone without a CDL could do. And I think- Wait, What do you mean you can't use every piece of equipment on the truck or from- No, uh, on the salt truck, they can use the whole salt truck. Okay. Commercial drivers, that's just the path is way driven. I understand. I just want to make sure you wasn't talking about the salt truck in this immediate comment following. No. Okay. Okay, so- I lost my second question, but it'll come Sorry, Mark. Okay. Sorry, and as long so as I've derailed sort of, you now. That sort of screws uh, up a building. If that person does have a CDL license, it sort of screws up a weekend rotation. Yes. So, to me, that would be a valuable piece, being able to have five crew that could rotate. I recall that I asked if there was somebody in queue, and I think I got an affirmative that there was somebody in the pipeline? I wouldn't describe it like that. We haven't had any, I wouldn't even say that we've had any informal talks with anybody. anybody. We have received one application and two others have expressed some interest, but they haven't done anything other than, hey, are you gonna hire for a fifth employee? You know, let me know when you. I think what I'm getting at is, if we post this job tomorrow, what are the chances we find somebody, anyways? Because half the time I look through the paper, it looks like other towns are out there poaching wherever they can. It it's a very competitive atmosphere right now for uh, yeah anybody with CDL. Uh, and if I were living in Johnson, I'll bet the Essex Junction pays more. I don't live close enough. They, it, no, you don't live close enough. You have to be with it. A lot of towns have a 30 minute requirement for a public works employee to, you know, they have to live within 30, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. so, I think we do. We do. Yeah, it's yeah. part of our personnel policy. Beth can get to Essex Junction in 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 Oh, um, my minivan. <laughs> is there interest in posting a position to interview candidates or not? I'd really like to have a better understanding of why it makes sense from an economic standpoint to do so. But, you know, I'm, I was prepared to, to make a motion or to support a motion. But knowing that weekend hours are automatically overtime and some of those some of those additional things are making me less comfortable that it might be a cost prudent thing to do. That's does it make sense for the, you to get the contract further along before we so we know what we're getting into? Uh, who knows how long that's gonna take. Um, the best advice we've had about work, like conducting our business during contract negotiations is to just conduct our business regularly. Brian, could we find out 
um, you know, talking about additional information acquired, could we find out whether or not other towns? I'm uncomfortable with the notion that we automatically pay overtime for weekend hours. That's that's a whole rollover from you know, days when people were Monday and Friday. I think in this in this certain industry, it's pretty common. I can ask around about it. I think a differential pay for weekend is is pretty common, and I can certainly support that. For, for weekend work, but if if, it, if if you're doing a truly rotating schedule where people are not expected to work a weekend, you know, if they get one weekend off, I'd like to know that there, too. The diff I would like to know the different. I would like to know if people are doing different. Okay, because when I used to work in a different industry altogether, I get not the same industry. But if you worked nights or weekends, you got differential pay. You didn't get double. You didn't get overtime. Time and a half. No differential pay. It's not the same. It's cents, not you dollars. Might, yeah, you might have gotten fifty cents an hour more if you're doing weekend work or a dollar an hour. You know, whatever. I mean, back in the nineties, it was cents. It yeah. maybe a couple dollars now, but it's still differential pay. It's still not time and a half. Is Sunday right. double time? No. No. Okay. I, I do want to clarify though. It's not that we we were never able to make the splitting the crew up into different groups work out for us. We don't uh, have enough employees for that. Like, I don't feel like that's reasonable with the number. Yeah. Even with five employees, I don't feel like that's reasonable. We looked at plans about it uh, with when we had the five employees and it, it wasn't working out. We couldn't make that effective use of our staff, having our guys comfortable, completing things in a reasonable amount of time. So it's not that well, reasonable amount of time during the week or on the weekends? Uh, moving a couple of the people off to do work over the weekends would increase the time during the week uh, that regular operations took because they wouldn't be available to work during the week. Like they, they would have two they days. They would be on overtime on Wednesday and Thursday. But that also assumes that you're going to have storms on a five day a week basis. We don't have storms on a five day a week basis. So there, there are days when you got five guys sitting around a shop in the morning or half the day. So it's, you know, I understand that that's why I say the foreman is important in the whole discussion. If you, if you know you're going to have a storm, the foreman can. Call all five members in if, if need be. Uh, yes, Jeff. What do you have four or five? Do you have to have a more available or when you have the schools out? So, well, you have to have everyone available all regardless of the day of week, but yes. Um by a certain And the shifts are four hour. It's four hours to get through a route. I think Jason said. On we average, yeah. Like well, we only have so many trucks, so yeah, there's five of them. Yeah, we have trucks. We have four plus a salt truck. Yeah. Well, there's three so tandems: a salt truck and the foreman truck. Uh, and the well, foreman the truck works very good for plowing personal driveways. Uh, here we go. We're not going there again. Yeah, get oh. idea. Scratch a little faster. Uh, One thing I would like to say, um, I honestly feel that Jason is not getting the support that he needs. We keep encouraging him to further computer skills, come up with plans and everything. But when your butt is in the seat and you're doing the same physical labor, Time constraints happen. So maybe we would see some different things if we physically gave him the time. That's not the only reason, but 
I'm supportive of it, but I'm hearing that there's still waiting periods. Do some board members want to wait until they see the union contract? We could go into executive session to discuss that at the end of the meeting, I guess. 820. Oh, hey. Yeah, you got to text that Rob guy. Uh, or maybe we do the executive sessions, nine and 10, and push five, six, seven, and eight after. I'd like to at least do number nine on time because we have a. So where are we? Uh, I guess where are we leaving? Hold on, hold on. Or, yeah. First of all, fifth employee, well, how are we leaving this discussion? What is your opinion, Mark? What would you like to see happen next or not? I'd like to. I'd like to act on it next month. I'd like to come to a conclusion. I'd like to get a little more information, and then by next month. Because next month or next meeting, two weeks, it's October. If we really want somebody for the winter, we better get moving. What specific information are you looking for? I'd like to know more about whether it will um, save us money on overtime or whether we're just adding another employee. I mean, I have a sense that overtime is critical, that these folks want their overtime and it's critical to them bringing on a fifth person isn't going to actually reduce the overtime costs. And I would like to have a sense of whether that, it, there's some savings around that would be important to me. Okay. That's fair. Is that your only outstanding question at this point? It is a moment, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thoughts? I guess my, my big question would be the issue of automatic overtime and state marginal pay. I don't see how a fifth person changes that. Though. I mean, that's already that that's already policy. Well, one of the things, and I guess I guess I would like also then to have a better understanding of whether or not adding a fifth employee would actually. Years ago, I was told by the road foreman at the time that we had to have a fifth employee because if they did, it would allow um, a weekend off a month for each employee. Will that actually, will having a fifth employee actually allow, uh, you know, an employee, can you set up a schedule so that an employee is guaranteed a weekend off a month? The way it used to be, they were on call, you know, from November 15th through middle of March, they were on call. Right, what's that? Okay, got it. So no, will one no will this employee vacations. allow for one weekend off? Or... Are you specifically talking about like calling? They're not on call for the weekend. Well, okay. can we, we... stay call and pay either? Okay, so got that's it. That's, that's the question. Story. I'm just gonna leave it there. That's the question. Yeah, can we pick this up after our Wait one second. Yeah. Do you have anything outstanding? No. I don't either. I think my question, I agree with Duncan on the differential, but I also agree with Mark. It doesn't have to do with a fifth employee. Um, and I'm very interested in that high end fitting into our budget. And can we get away with pushing it out as long as possible or having a part time employee? Because I don't think we should be breaking our budget. Okay. Okay. Well, I, so I would like to say this is a lot of really good information. That's all I have. Sorry. No worries. Okay, good. So we're going to move our agenda number nine, which is request to change conditions of loan to Blackjack LLC um, up next. Um, before we go into executive session, what do you have to do? Anything? Do you have to talk to Pat in any way? Uh, I can't actually see the who's logged in, whether Pat's logged in already or not. Want to go check? Yeah. And we are going to go into executive session for this one, but I guess you guys are here from Blackjack, yeah? We'll give you a few minutes if you just want to talk to the board before we go into executive session. Um, if you'd like, if you don't want to, that's fine too.
I'd like well, let us just make sure that we have books on. Yeah, go ahead. I'd like clarity as to what we will be discussing. I, I think some of this probably should be discussed in open session, and some of it, particularly in the financial information, needs to be discussed in executive session. Well, it's terms of negotiation. We're, talk, we're being asked to negotiate. We're being asked, so is this considered a contract? It's not a contract. It's a, a loan, in terms of a loan. Those are under executive session. I think that it should be an open session. You can't discuss. I the personal financial is an open session. But this is the term we're not talking about we're talking about like Duncan says the terms of a loan, us deciding to change that. I would think that the public would want it. If I can weigh in, because I, I did do a decent amount of reading about this in preparation for the meeting. Um I think that you have a point that the ask to change should be in, in open session details about why the change is being asked for could reveal uh, business dealings and essential information for, in this case, we're obviously talking about blackjack, but it could reveal sensitive information that is protected on their part, their their business activities, their financial information, and other things. So that the ask is public, but the reasoning of why it's justified and why they're asking wouldn't be. And that's the clarification I was seeing in that context. What would be the proper statutory reference to enter into executive session? It is A six. Yep, A six. And do we want to visit one of these folks say. first before we go to the executive mm -hmm. session? Yeah. The, the, what would you like to hear? Kind of the, the, the right thing would be the the no, ask. We need to well before we do that, what the right the the in open session, it would be appropriate for the for the ask of you know that we're being asked to change conditions of the loan. Well, I don't right. think we should do that until after we put the executive. Well, we shouldn't make a decision on it, but the decision should be public. The ask should be public, but all discussion about the ask should be in executive. We should allow them to speak before we go to executive session. Yes. And they can share what they feel comfortable sharing. Yes. And this is not related to. What are they looking? What are you looking at? I'm looking at statues. Oh, Allison, and Chris, if you want to at... come on up and grab an extra chair, uh, our audience microphone isn't working, so you've got to use one of the. So very specifically, the negotiating or securing of real estate purchase or lease options doesn't apply because we're the it's a loan, it's not the like purchase of any estate. Okay. But the release of information, I think Brian's right. The release records of exempt from the access to public records provision of section 316 of this title provided. However, that discussion of the exempt record shall not itself permit an extension of the executive session to the general public to which the record pertains. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. And the exempt records include. Uh, Business operation, business secrets, sensitive information about anything that could impair their operation or their ability to negotiate or their ability to conduct business. Okay. So, so hopefully you you so, have heard all this and, oh, and don't yeah. reveal anything that you don't. He want sounds spot on. The <laughs> that you don't want. If there is something to know. that you do want to reveal that is sensitive, that you want us to hear but not the public, then we need to invite you into executive session. Correct. Okay. And you already got them. 
financial information from us. We do. Yes. We have everything. So everything they've sent us. Yeah, if you have that, I don't think that you need to share it in a public session. I think you already have. Okay. Right. Do you want to? Yeah. Do you want me to paraphrase the request sure. that you made? Okay. So, Blackjack LLC is requesting of the select board to change the terms of the loan, in particular, the collateral held by the town. Good release. In essence, release the release the equipment as part of the collateral. Yes. Yes. Uh, basically, seeking to uh, have a possibility to uh, sell the business without a lien on the equipment, and the equipment would go with the business. So to, to have the ability to clear that, um, I believe you guys were third on the list of that lien. It was the uh, Union Bank first, and then Vita was second. We've given all of them the same information that you have as far as the financials of their free and clear to clear that lien for us uh, with, with the information they have, and they're vetting with that information uh, as long as we have a good purchase and sale agreement, which obviously would be held up if we had a lien on equipment we were trying to sell. So basically, we're looking for the ability to do business, as you said, uh, without any incumbents on the Maybe something you want to divulge or not divulge in an open session, but um, what, what is your bank and media said that they said they will? Yes, they, they're they're 100% on board. Be, before the sale, they will release their liens. Yes, the, well, they said all they need is a good purchase sale agreement, and they will write a release of the liens for both uh, the Union Bank number one and you know, number two. So I didn't see. Uh, any conflict with you guys being third on the list with the, with the equity and the uh, building and the income on the building, but it shouldn't be a problem. But that's obviously up to you guys to decide in the executive session. So, Union Bank and Vita also have liens in the building? Yes. Well, they, they have the well, they have the first and second loan on the building. They're carrying the mortgage, basically. Yeah. So, they're first. And they, they have a separate collateral for the business equipment, or is it just the, uh, just the mortgage? Yeah. Is the mortgage, is the business equipment included in the, of the mortgage? No, we own that. That's ours next year for the rest of the company. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Found me if this is something you want to discuss in the executive session, but is this a theoretical for you guys, or do you have a well? I mean, buyer? I would say, you know, when we first got into this uh, in 2014, it was a 10 year plan. We're finishing up nine years now in 2022, and uh, you know, we're looking toward the future. And obviously, it's easier to go into an agreement with somebody without a lien on equipment if you're selling that. Uh, we hope to have a potential suitor. Uh, as soon as we find out, you guys will find out because they would be coming to you for a liquor license. So <laughs> I believe that you guys would be uh, for some of us to know. So it sounds like the other two main points are conditional upon receipt of the PNS agreement. Yes, I don't think there'd be a purpose of releasing the lien if there wasn't. And would you be comfortable if? If the hour vote, I can't say what the state board is going to do. Would you be comfortable if our vote was conditional upon the PMS agreement? Yeah, I would say. In that way, we, we are still in the game. Yeah, my, I guess my other question is I'm, I'm assuming this, what they say about assuming that he's putting some ass out or something, <laughs> um, that you guys would. Your plan, at least initially, was to continue to own the company and continue to be owners of the loan. Okay. Yes. Of the loan. Right. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, most of or all of the income that has been, you know, 
been made the last however many years as far as the blackjack LLC uh, the last four years has gone back into the building so renovation repairs yep. so we're definitely interested in keeping the building up. improve can you see if Pat can hear okay well I guess Pat can you hear us you didn't log in yeah, I can hear most most of what's happening. I'm having a little trouble hearing Chris, but uh, I can hear most of it. Bad acoustics. <laughs> <laughs> um, so being a lean on the loan, essentially, uh, we all know the outstanding amount at this point. Um, I guess my concern is about equity in the building, like what your equity in the building is. And if something were to happen, is there enough equity that the town would get the loan amount back if the bank, you know, I don't know how much your outstanding bank amounts are, but you don't have to say that. Do you guys um, have that information for the person? Uh, do you see that? No, that wasn't. I don't think so. I don't think that's something I can add. Um, so I'm just worried about like the equity so that the town, you know, is. I think there is. I think we could stick around for an executive session to divulge that information if you guys need to know the balance of the loans and the equity. Yeah. And the income on the building. Okay. That'd be great. I'm going to join the Zoom so that I can see that. You're going to run it. So I would. Just say as an individual board member, I can't speak for any other on behalf of myself. I personally think the loan fund that you got the loan from, um, the purpose of that was to try and encourage business development and investment in their businesses. And um, you know, personally, I'm okay with even though it might be a problem transfer of ownership at some point in time. I'm, I think the basic tenets of our loan fund are being met. Um, because, uh, from what I can tell, been um, right on time in all things. Um, the track record, you know, I personally, um, if, if I were to make a motion at some point in time, it would probably be contingent upon, you know, release of the collateral contingent on the community. Would we be when you say that, Duncan? How do you see this happening? Would the PNS agreement include payment to us for our amount? I am not thinking that way. Oh, I think right. was... Say more. I, my... What is the PNS? Why does that make you comfortable? It tells me that there's a commitment on their part to actually sell. They're not just asking to be released from the collateral or giggles, uh, but they've got a serious commitment and a serious buyer to continue the operation of the restaurant in that location. And does that mean that we would be paid off our debt at that time? No, that necessary. wouldn't be part of mine. That wouldn't be part of any motion. They no, are going to be trying to continue. The loan holder, okay. and they would continue to make the payments. And we're all we're already at risk. We're, we're already third in line on the collateral. We're already third in line on the mortgage. Um, so I mean, we're we're at risk anyway. You look at it. But our equity is reduced once we release collateral on equipment. Like if you take total equity of equipment and the building. And us being thirty nine, I think we are at greater risk in releasing equipment because the total value owned by these guys is higher with much higher with the equipment, meaning it reduces the town's risk by having equipment uh, than without. And I'm not suggesting where I'm leading by saying this. I'm just stating like equity facts. The way it works. <laughs> and, <clears throat> I guess my comeback on that would be if you're in the bank and Vita 
are willing to release the lien and uh, release the collateral uh, portion, then. But they don't have as high risk as we do being first and second in the list. Like our risk is higher being third in line. Our chance of getting anything if something is also falls. considerably lower being third in line. Yeah, right. So the more equity it, there is, the lower the risk. Mm. Do they, do Union Bank and Vita have liens on the equipment, or are we the only people with liens on the equipment? They have one third in line, third in line. Oh, and equipment third in and line on the equipment. property. Both. And on the property. And the property. Oh, I got it. I thought we were strictly equipped. The amount of equity uh, being released uh, at the time of the loan would be pretty minimal, I think, considering the total cost of the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it, it does depreciate. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's good for a tax perspective. Pat, do you have thoughts or anything you want to add to this discussion? Um, sure, sure. There's been a little bit of new information that I wasn't aware of. I, I did not understand that Vito was also um, a part of the collateral. Um, it was my understanding the three parties would be Blackjack, the town, and the bank so that definitely does change things um and actually sort of exposes the town to a higher risk now than i than i originally understood um so would certainly change my personal thinking a little bit because there is already as duncan indicated a, a fair amount of risk with the loan um the only thing i would say is and again we're you know we're an impartial um entity in, in this what i can say is a traditional lender um you know would offer three options when a request like this came one would be pay the loan one would be replace the collateral or the other would be um pay the loan upon sale but this isn't a traditional loan so i think by going by those standards strictly would be kind of shortchanging the purpose of, of the revolving loan fund to some extent. That's an opinion anyway. Um, so I, you know, the select board has the ability to do things that a traditional lender would not do. And um, it's my understanding. A lot of the, the loan, the purpose of the loan is for one of the purposes is for economic development of the community. And, you know, it is an important building in the community. It's an important business in the community. And that should probably, the future of that building and that business should probably factor into the, the board's decision-making and the amount of risk that they're um, willing to take. Because again, you know, it, it, it this, the town of Johnson is not Union Bank or uh, any other traditional lender. And, um would likely approach this differently than just saying, well, here's the original, you know, here's the, the three options that we typically offer people when these requests come in. Um, certainly would be interesting if, if there is a, a, a large concern about the risk from removing the collateral, um, knowing what the equity is, but at the end of the day, there's a fair amount of inherent risk in the loan right now, being a third party in line which is something I didn't understand um, when I first sort of encountered this discussion. So I'm not sure that the risk goes up significantly um, by removing that collateral in this particular case. It does it go up a little, sure, but um, there's a fair amount of risk already from a, you know, from strictly from a financial banking standpoint. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to make the motion? I would, are we at the point where we have a motion? If you'd like to motion. So. I would make a motion to 
authorized the release of collateral um, the valid purchase and sale agreement which can be applied by Blackjack LLC. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Me. I just have it. Okay. Got it. Got it. So you guys don't need us to divulge any more personal financial? You could stay for the whole meeting if you want. <laughs> That's if a like to, we could go into executive <laughs> session. But no so do we, need, do we actually need to execute a new loan agreement, which would then be signed? Should I make a motion to authorize the chair to sign a new loan agreement based on those conditions? Is that what would need to happen? I now? think uh, Union Bank of Vita both set up a memorandum, which is basically some sort of a, a memo release. I think that's yeah, uh, good question. What would you need? Speak into this this way. Your mic's here. Whoops. He's not <laughs> physically over there. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Okay. Um, so the question the question would be um, what would you need from the board uh, to change the terms of the loan agreement? Or well, be... let's just, I think a memorandum would be fine, just okay. um, removing the collateral and we'll just add it as a. We'll add it to the agreement. We, we don't need to rewrite the whole thing. Okay. Steve, would you like to move? I would move that the chair uh, be authorized to sign a memorandum of understanding, changing the long term conditions to uh, eliminate the collateral upon receipt of a purchase and sales agreement from Black Tech Limited. Okay. Do no. you have a motion to do a second? Um, can I slow you down one minute? Yeah, please. Are, we're eliminating the equipment, correct? Not all collateral? Correct. Okay, so let's just make sure that's clear in, in the motion that's being made. Equipment, equipment collateral. Okay. That was my okay. thing, too. <laughs> well, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> okay, so equipment collateral. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yep. Mark seconds. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 You guys don't have to wait for each other. You could all just say aye at once. Okay. I was having... trying to let them go first. Pat, thank you very much for hopping on with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, happy to help. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much for your time. Thank you. Yeah. You can yeah. stay. Yeah. It, it is a public meeting. You can stay. You can for the rest of it. <laughs> It'll be as when's the vodka sauce coming back? Yeah, so yeah. And my comments earlier about you know going into executive session versus executive session. Last person that probably nothing, pizza there. Nothing to do with the words. I want to make sure that we're following our everybody's comments on it. Thanks. Good luck. Okay. Are we are we are we going to ten? Or are we going back to five? Ten. Uh. Well, let's. Hey, Donna. Yeah. You probably don't want to stay for another executive session, do you? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to where we were. Five. Proposed Proposed municipal, municipal partnership. partnership. Okay, so I'll take the lead on that one, I guess. Um, I sent out the spreadsheet and email. Um, again, my figures are based on what I think are maximum. Yep. Uh, but Evan pointed out this morning that I think. Well, thank you. I think we're probably carrying fifteen thousand dollars, Brian, in our current year budget for assessor services. Oh wait, no, that's fine. Uh, Rosemary, did you? I don't oh, even I know what I gave you. What are you guys doing now? Uh, I, I gave you is it, is it, there's a line item for Lister's contracted services. It's fifteen thousand. Is it in? Is there any other cost spread to any other? No. Line item. No. No. Okay. It is. It, it also. It is all that contained in one line. Item. Okay, so that that mm. line item, Evan asked me this morning if I knew what that was. I looked it up, and there was a line item for um, Lister's contract and services. So mm. this would exceed um, by ten thousand. You know, at least but for, that's for half a year estimate. Estimated. It's estimated, and um, the two big things I think that are. You know, a question are what the um, rate that LCPC would charge um, 
in their written documentation, they had 10%. Uh, but in talking with Tasha Wallace on the phone the other day, she mentioned the figure of 15%. So I guess that would need to be- Percent of what? Of the total compensation. So that not just salary, but everything. Um, gotcha. Okay. And so that's that's what that's what the fifteen percent of the spreadsheet um, shows. Uh, and the other thing that is in here right now is a retirement benefit. What Ooh. Tasha has told me is that Beamers has told her and other regional planning commissions looking at doing these service agreements is as regular part-time employees, um, they would not be eligible for Beamers. So my, our thought was if it was a full-time position that the, we might offer what would be the employer's contribution. And I just rounded that out to 6% of, you know, of their salary, of their base salary. So that might not be in there for this um, go around, but it's important to think about. The long-term goal, I think, would be to find somebody, find enough hours to cover a 40 hour a week person, which is gonna change the pro rate share on health insurance, um, retirement. Um, right. It might also reduce the totally hourly rate because if, we, if you get to 30 hours, you're considered full-time for health insurance and you've got to pay health insurance, you know, the full bulk. What what you would pay any other full-time employee. Is that state law? The it's federal hours. law. Federal law. It's 30 state. hours is you have to you have to pay health insurance. Yes. And it's reflected also I think it's state statute. But, but that's uh, uh, the so so called Obamacare so this, regulation. So you just need conceptual approval of support in trying to fund a shared assessor position? We, we need, um, LCPC needs a, a commitment from the town up to a, you know, to a certain number of hours. I'm recommending eight. I talked with um, Terry Saban. Terry said you could probably maintain the grant list at four hours a week, but you if you want to do, you know, a little bit more, That's like keep no, the cross maps up to date, things like that, they've got is for the idea. Right, but it's not already assuming these exact costs. Let's just say it's the not assuming be these exact costs. The cost of the thing would be lower than this. So I'm, it's a hard position to fill. Yeah. You have to have it. We, we've got to do one of two things. There's we've no either, rules. We've There's either no got to put out an RFP and advertise the position ourselves um, and see if we can attract somebody, or we go in with a service agreement with LCPC and see what we If we actually them. paid listers a decent rate while they were working, do you think there'd be any interest in that, or no? A lot of towns are doing really, really have a hard time. Yeah. I like the idea of having like one less list. headache for the town, frankly. One advantage of having LCPC do it is it is a service agreement. They take care of HR, they take care of hiring, they take care of payroll, they take care of, it's probably nice for Rosemary to think about it too. <laughs> uh, what do you worry about with this? Anything? I think this is a good solution. There's village? other solutions. What is the village pass? I don't Check with Rosemary. I don't it's think that, they pay us anything. Does the village pay us for doing no. this? No. They just the piggyback on. They, 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 they put their rates based on. Maybe we, maybe we should charge them to share that. Yeah. It's public information, isn't it? If they go for a new charter, that's something you can ask for. Um, so I have motion to. Commit Johnson to eight hours a week. That we're in support of a shared assessor's position. With LCPC. With LCPC. So it's a contract service with LCPC. But we don't have like final numbers, so we're not. Yes, and we'll get a second bite of the apple on like this a... because if there's a service agreement gets put together, 
it has to go back to each board and the LCPC board and everybody's got to agree. I motion for who's handling this? You do you want to inform them? Hold on. Did you already did you already say did you just say a motion? Well, that was like an extension it of my motion. Off. It wasn't seconded yet, <laughs> so it's not a friendly amendment. It's still running. Donna, what do you have so far? I have so far that you will to commit Johnson to eight hours a week and support a shared assessment position or contracted service with LCPC. Because I'm not sure should do that, but. Yes. How, how about enter into a service agreement with LCPC for a shared assessor position? I conceptually yes. agree <laughs> with entering into it, but I don't have an exact number, so I'm not gonna motion to enter into it. Okay. But the thing is you used the word committed. That's why I asked for the readback. So are you committing or are you not committing? I conceptually committed. So <laughs> How do we word it? Uh, do you know about concept? Uh, all right. Please <laughs> <laughs> conceive. How about Johnson is interested. How there. About draft, no. How about to draft a service agreement? Sure. With Johnson committing to eight hours a week. Okay. Please right. pause. Can we redo the whole thing? Nobody's seconded yet. All right. All right. Are you ready? So you Oh, you, you said you're going to read it to me now? Yeah. So, I'm going to make it a lot shorter. This will be interesting. You should not pay attention to anything you wrote and maybe just rewrite. Right. <laughs> just delete it. <laughs> Forget what you said. <laughs> now you lost me, Duncan. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I motion for LCPC to draft a service, a service agreement and for Johnson to commit to eight hours of assessor's services contracted with LCBC. It's not. Second. There. Second. It's good. Okay. You could have made it at any point. Is, is it the discussion phase right now? Is it the consensus of the folks in this room that eight hours a week is going to get us what we need? Yeah, I'm, sorry. Looking, I'm looking at it. It's an average. There'll be some weeks. There'll be some weeks when they're working 16 and some when they're working four. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be like the rough position. Yeah. Interesting. The zero. It doesn't seem like a lot of hours when I remember what our old assessors used to do. I did the check with Terry area. Saban, who is doing it for us right now. Mm -hmm. um, and she's at a range of, you know, minimum would be four hours a week just to basically maintain the grant list. All right. And she really said, you know, if I were going to recommend something to you, I'd say eight. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, Donna, are you good with that motion? Right on. Conceptually, you like it. <laughs> so In concept. <laughs> I like it. I like the concept. Okay, so we have a motion. We have a second. Any other dis further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That was great. See? <laughs> we do that every time. Okay. <laughs> Pass the pretty well. All right. Next up is our uh, our passive renewal. So uh, we do have to. We will still have to uh, complete the uh, submitting the payroll information uh, and the property valuation reports. Uh, for passive, which will determine our final rate, which is why the final rate is not available. Uh, but they, that's their regular operations that they, they ask for our renewal first. Um, can I ask that perhaps you and Rosemary take a very close look at their property schedule? You know, in the past, they have sometimes thrown some pretty exorbitant numbers out there for the value of buildings. Um, and, you know, we in the past, we pushed back on those numbers and said, you know, that's just too much. Because at the end of the day, our rates are going to be dependent on what value gets assigned to the various buildings and properties. 
No. So I would just ask, you know, perhaps you and Rosemary both take a, <coughs> a close look at their proposed schedule. And we'll take a, a close look at that. Mm -hmm. I've also made time with uh, Eric Bailey, I think. Oh, the village yeah, the new village manager to review shared equipment and shared property again. Uh, just now that we've got somebody else in the office responsible for this stuff, it's a good time for us to just run through all the shared property <coughs> again and make sure it's all insured adequately and not like you're saying overly so yeah we want to certainly make sure that it, we're properly covered but i can tell you you know anecdotally in the past sometimes they have put some numbers out there yep so you know 7.8 inflation factor is really high isn't that really high that's really high that's that's what they're Proposing. Yeah, but they yeah. don't. <clears throat> so you need a motion to go get what the cost of yeah, renewing well, PCF is. We the the motion that I'm asking for is to renew our property and casualty insurance with passive. But we don't know what the cost is. We don't know what the cost is. Can we just Genius. do quotes? Do we have, have we, have we, we ever quotes? not used that? Uh, never, as long as I've been here, we've used them. Okay. Duncan, are you aware, or Rosemary, if we've ever used anybody besides passive? Years ago. Ten years ago. Yeah. What, what I would caution about getting, going out for quotes, and I've seen this happen <coughs> time with other towns, is if you go out for quote, somebody's going to come in and they're going to give you a nice low ball quote because they want your business. But within three years, they're going to be more than what passive. Stay. Okay, we can go back. We have annual renewals. Yeah, uh, you can do what you want. I, I, I will not, as an individual board member, I will be supportive of going with another insurer. I think passive, for one thing, does things that other insurers don't do. Like we get a lot of ancillary benefits. We we do get quite a bit. Member, um, and, you know, you don't get those from other insurance carriers. At this point, passive, and I, I'm hesitant to be exact, but last time I knew, passive covered property and casualty insurance for all but two or three eligible municipalities in the state. Sorry, but I'm just hearing a whole bunch of bias. Yeah. All I hear is bias, bias, bias. And, and I did work for passive for a time so i would like to see what other there's get... lots of pnc insurers in this world and i would like to see what some other reputable uh, property casualty insurers would come back with for quotes i'm just curious and also i mean i'm also curious about inflation rates that are out there because i think that that's a high inflation rate yeah, that's why I suggested taking a real close look at their their schedule of what they're proposing to change, you know, for the values of buildings. That what did we budget? That would be down I, I don't know what the number is off the top of my head. With, with passive, you have the ability to uh, do several different options for property. You can use an agreed upon value. You can use uh, appraised or assessed value. I forget what the, I think there's four different categories. I don't remember what the replacement. Would be one. Yeah, yeah. Full replacement. Yeah. And I think, I think in a lot of cases we looked at replacement value and that's where they, <clears throat> I thought some of their numbers were really for example, there were, there were buildings that we probably wouldn't have even replaced um, and they were using replacement value, but we certainly wouldn't have replaced at, you know, some magic number. It's, tough. it's very tough one because nowadays you want to replace your buildings to code too, because buildings were, were made before there were codes. I ran probably in it, but you need to replace it. Probably need to replace it to code. When is our when is our term up? 
Please or no, uh, they want to. They want well, us to register next week. Next week. <laughs> next week? <laughs> yes. Please or no by October seventh. So okay, yeah, whatever. So when is our term up? Okay. We don't have to read it. What's our deductible with any of this? Uh, Two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. Yep. That is. Is it a thousand? Is it just me or is that insanely low? Depends on what you choose for your deductible. You choose your deductible usually. Right. But the higher the deductible, the lower the premium. Yep. Right. You get Partial trade off. A lot less those little broken window things. Check the time window something. Sorry. <laughs> we have an agent that we use, or we just go direct? We must go direct, huh? We mostly go direct. It's not that big of an organization. Do you have an agent? Okay, um, forget how big they are. It's not about them. It's about us. Do we have an agent? I have a contact there that I would use that I think would serve the function of an agent. Are they an underwriter or an agent? I don't know enough about insurance to. I don't think they have an agent. Profit passive is no longer traditional insurance. I understand. So, I understand it is specifically for. Municipality is probably the government. Yeah. So can we get three more quotes for the next meeting? Yes, is that where we're at? Are we at an impasse? Or just one or two? I would just like to know like where this falls. Are they doing the majority of the towns in the state? Uh, I believe that at this time there's between one and three. Uh, that aren't members. I think it's late in the game to try and get other votes. Uh, Renewal isn't for the first of the year. It, it doesn't renew, but they have 250 applications that they have to deal with the process to get into the, into the queue. Uh, sorry, I'm just like I work for a PNC company. Like it's not a big deal to process a renewal, and there are a whole bunch of things. There's a renewal date. There's a pre-renewal date. This is a pre-renewal date. I can promise you, it's not a renewal date, and it's probably thirty to forty-five days before the actual renewal date. That is even further out from the actual renewal term. Like there's time to do some homework and 250 applications for an underwriter is really nothing. I think we should ask some questions at the very least. I'd definitely like to know what it costs. Yeah, right. That, like, that that's like a really the... cool question. <laughs> And there are laws about needing about knowing what your rates are going to be in advance of going in. My guess is that they, I don't know if they follow the same rules as like personal as personal property or business property, for example. But you actually have to file rate increases through the state, get them approved, and also you can have inflation of up to a certain number. This is really high. This is higher than the number that you're allowed to just do without filing. Like it's a single digit inflation number that you're allowed to spend like 8% per person. They're not subject to bank insurance commission. Yeah. Another reason why wouldn't we get a quote? Like if they don't, if they. We had to fumble over a mowing contract for two months at the beginning of the year because it was the right thing to do to protect the taxpayers. If we don't at least ask for another quote, they're not protecting the taxpayers. It very well could end up coming back here. The question when we have three months out of the way, I'm comfortable with. I, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the third vote. So I'm with you too. Okay. So to be clear, so Brian. We should make it a motion then and make it an action item. We don't really motion. Fine. Motion to get quotes. <laughs> Fair enough. 
for um, property and casualty cover coverage through at least two other insurers beyond passive for the week. My second? Yep, go for it. Could we get a Are friendly amendment? Oh, yeah. I, I did second. Okay. Friendly amendment of like a $10,000 deductible or something. That way we're comparing like to like. Deductible options. About deductible options. options. We'll deductible Through options. passive, you mean? Well, we're, we're going to ask. Through passive and others. We're going to yeah, ask another. Well, well, if sure. you're going to compare, then you need to. Right. Everybody needs to be on the same page. That's why I said 10000 yeah. Okay. We could do 10 and 5. Is that a good enough? Yeah. I would be pretty uncomfortable with 10, but with are you talking about vehicles and equipment or buildings? I, I would do both, but that's up for the board to discuss. If you, the you thing about five. being uncomfortable with that, we're not going to take that Duncan, unless it's a, a real cost saver. You know, going to 10,000 may save almost $10,000. Even if it's just here. It's just quotes. We're not signing Correct. anything away. Just quote. Right. So, okay, I, I I accept your friendly amendment. Perfect. Are you clear, Donna? Motion and second. Any further amendment. discussion? Yeah. Well, we haven't voted yet. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> I think we still need majority. Aye. Yeah, I I'll vote too. Did you get who voted, Donna? I voted. I, 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 and I voted for okay. it. All right, are we on to the next item? Yes, please. Yes. Reviewing the capital equipment reserve fund. Before we before we go to that, can, can I at least, if we're going to compare apples to apples, I would like to have uh, a listing of what of the services that passive supplies to us at no cost that would not be considered well, like, in any other insurance package? No, they supply it at no cost, but we have to... At no cost or it's, 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 at it's no additional cost. cost. We have to pay. It's <laughs> free. <laughs> no, right? I think it's a good Don't point. you have to pay for a membership? It's part of the package. To be... Well, I guess we would anyways. Okay. Hello, yeah. Brad, Brian. List of additional yep. benefits um all right so next up we have the current uh highway department capital equipment fund balance and projection all right yes we actually can't um i believe that there needs to be some changes made to that uh, to the capital equipment reserve fund and we could either do it as a whole board at a special meeting or the board could task Brian and Jason and maybe a select member to come up with a couple of different options and bring it back at a future meeting. What are you talking about? What specifically are you talking about? Uh, plan? Right. Is that plan, something the voters would have to Well, approve? the plan no. changes they the would. reserve fund projection. Like the timing, uh, right? Like the compressor. What do you, you think's wrong? The compressor specifically, I do not believe actually needs to be replaced, and I should almost just be moved into small equipment because they don't use it hardly. Um, if an excavator were to be purchased, I would recommend pushing the backhoe back in replacement significantly to not next year because its primary use is for ditching. So if it was only needed for storm cleanup and small odds and ends here and there, we don't need a brand new one every five years or eight years. Uh, so the mower wait, wait, needs wait, wait, to be wait, wait, moved don't, up. Don't wait. Back out. You're suggesting changing the rotation to eight years instead of five years? No, I think it's eight, it's eight years now. Oh. I'm saying I would recommend it be pushed if an excavator is wanted by the board. Um, the screen... I don't actually believe we need to replace. Um, Jason has said to the board in the past that we could purchase a new motor for it, but I believe anybody that's looked at numbers, $18,000 a year for five Where's years. The it's the Reed oh, screen. What number? It's I right here. 11, okay. are you going back up? It's 36. No, no, I'm going down. Like this, watch. Oh. 
I'm going down just like this. Beth, do you see that? There's a list. Don't be an ass. Okay. The mower needs to be moved up in rotation. There's just a lot of changes to fit the current needs of down. And instead of doing it all here and taking the entire board's time, we could come back with a couple of different scenarios that the board would like. Or we could have a special meeting for it. Sounds like you already know what you want to change. But I can't make that decision. And no, I would like Brian and Jason's input. I'm comfortable deferring to you if you um, think it will save us money. I, I want to see it. Yeah, I want to see the differences. Yeah, I want, to, I want to see it. I want to come back back to Do you want to see it? I would make a motion okay. to authorize uh, Evan, Brian, and Jason to Perfect. draft a revised capital improvement plan. plan. Can and I just a friendly amendment bring it back to, the board? to have um, scenarios, a couple different scenarios? Yeah, we can. It doesn't even have to be an amendment. You can just add and ask. Yeah. Yeah, that you want a couple alternatives and what those will look like. Because yeah. if you come back with one, we want more. Like if I'll say that. Yeah. If I just come back, I'm not even going to say it. it it's a Sorry. good point. I, you know, the, my immediate good thought idea. was uh, if we buy an excavator, I would envision replacing the back. Yeah, so scenarios. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. Don't know if the board wants to do that. Yes, second. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I okay. guess I'll recuse myself. Uh, Are you aye? You can say yes, aye. I said aye. Me. Okay, everyone. Unanimous. There you go, Donna. Um, I hate to do this, but can, can I go back to the <laughs> passive question? Uh, uh, it, it, the important part of this, the important part of Brian's ask tonight was to fill out the, the renewal application, not to sign up for oh. so so in other words there's there's like a six or eight it's day process process yeah. that he would submit that and they would give us a price oh, based on fine. that I, I would like to see brian fill out the application it doesn't commit us to buying from passive we can certainly look at the other quotes that we get but if he doesn't fill out the renewal application they won't be able to give us a price to compare i had understood the board's request when you're asking for quotes i assume that passive is included in the places you want quotes from yes i agree okay yeah. so you're clear i'll work with passive out. to you know get them everything they need in order to give us a quote for next okay. year yeah okay the greater all right Next up is a draft. Thanks for clarifying, by the way. One of those ambiguous things you don't want to be ambiguous about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really appreciate that too. Um, the ne next up is a draft request for bids to purchase our grader. The, I put some dates on here. Just to purchase one. Uh, for someone else to purchase ours. Yeah. Um, I put some dates on here just to kind of lay out kind of the rhythm of the the timeline, uh, but not not holding us to anything in particular. Uh, the other thing I did is suggest um, you know making time available at some point for people to come do inspect their own inspections of the equipment. Um, rather than setting it up individually by phone call, just pick a day and time and you can come and see the grader and start it up and, you know, we're not going to mess around with it any other time. Would it be better to actually, I mean, if you get a bunch of towns all standing around looking at this grader at the same time. That's perfect. Perfect. Tires, man. Yeah, they're all better. Better. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. increasing the value. I don't know if it collusion increases the value or the, the, I don't know. Anyways. I, I mean, it could go either way. It could be they they show up, they see a bunch of other towns there, they're going to bid higher on it. Or it could be, you know, they all agree that it's a piece we're going to lowball. They're all going to lowball us together. 
What did we figure was the minimum dollar that we wanted or needed to receive? Should we say that in a public that meeting? Right it says $1,000. thousand dollars Well, that's, it, that's what it says. And that's, that's not the minimum that we have to meet. That, that's, yeah. Yeah, that was my question. No. No. I thought it was one to ten. Um, regardless. Okay, let's make it one. I, I, the, we can make another number. There was, we had discussed a couple minimum bids. Um, I believe I'd have to go back. Mm -hmm. I believe 110 or the, the higher numbers were what we said we wanted to see to make it worthwhile for the effort that we're putting into selling it rather than just trading it in. Um, but I, I, this was the number that I had for a, a minimum, but I, I can change it to anything. The attention mobile home bit, that needs to be changed. I leave that in there somewhere? Yeah, I think it's it was an for accident. The interesting oh, yeah. parties. The other thing I, I did base this on. Change, Brian, is uh, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, say again? Well, we had this problem uh, with the painting bits. Um, you've got seal bits. Yes. Um, and I don't, I don't know that because a lot of towns are going to send it via email now. Um, this does not. I, I don't. Ex, I don't have my email in here. I'm not saying you know. Email me for whatever. Are we narrowing? This, this the is goal saying. Accepting emails. Give us a bid in writing. That's the only way we're taking it. Why? We can go to email. Um, it makes it a little bit sensitive to the sealed process. Well, yeah, to reveal who was the high bidder. Uh, if I or anybody else has can see these in advance, there could be a claim that if I've seen something, you know, did I reveal any information in advance? Just have them send the bids to Beth Foy. Um. Once that gets leveled out, that's fine. Um, the inspection period, well, it's nice to have it be a day in three hours. That is November 8th. And if it's snowing, we won't be present at our own inspection. And every town around here won't be there. So I almost think we have to give like Maybe two either. dates or three dates. Make an appointment. Why don't they make an appointment? Make an appointment. That's an option. Speaking with Jason, it seems like it's going to be more convenient to pick a date, but we might pick a date and a rain date. I think we should also have a statement in here that the town of Johnson reserves the right to reject any and all bids. That's a very important one. I don't see anything here that says. The actual date of sale. Uh, it says that the bid will be open at a public meeting in the select board on right. Monday, November 21st. The, and then a couple sentences. within 48 hours. Yeah. So we're confident we'll have our new date in there. Again, these dates are, for example, only. We're not ready to go to publication until we know more about. I, I'm not really confident on getting the grader in time until it's here. Shouldn't we? I mean, one way to deal with that would be to have a statement in here that says final sale contingent upon the town receiving its. If we want to publish early, the last instruction from the board wasn't really clear on whether. It was clear. We weren't going to put it out. It's just a draft until we got the new. Yeah. Greater. That's where we left it. So I guess the question is are we peaceful with this format and what's written here. And then we could decide when it wants to go out. So for changes, we have changing the dollar amount to 110. Mm -hmm. The town of Johnson reserves the rights to reject all bids after the second paragraph. Yep. Interested, par interested party should submit sealed envelope to and change attention to greater bid. And then adding a rain, rate, rain date by appointment.
Can't we select sealed bids until Monday? I guess there's no real advantage. Because we we're stopping getting the sealed bid the Friday before the meeting at 4 p.m. But if anything good came in over the weekend, it would have to be rejected. So make it still 4 p.m. on Monday. Yeah, I mean, these dates are, your point is make it consistent with the day that we're. Right. We're actually meeting. Okay. So do you need action from us to meet a motion? I don't think I need a motion. You know, the, the board isn't posting anything yet. Uh, motion to make recommended amendments? Is the, we don't need a motion. It's just no, a motion. we don't need a motion. Yeah. I was just wondering if and you wanted a motion for it. Is this, um, is this restricting us by only having mail bids? Like a serious question. It's, Theoretically possible that there could be somebody who's interested. Well, I don't care about theoretically possible. I just am asking because is it like a trend that we're getting things via email these days? We are getting more things via email and we are, that does include things where we ask for sealed bids. There are a number of folks that are emailing us their bids rather than sending them in a sealed envelope when we give them the option of either email or uh, or by postage. I'm comfortable with email. I am too. I, I, I think if you know if you get an email bid, you can put it in an envelope and say, the you know, date stamp it, it and, yep. and the board is going to open it. I'm no, I've got, comfortable with that. I can, when we're doing proposals, I pretty easily sort that kind of stuff into a folder in my email and I can do that and I can just not share it until our meeting. Yeah, and you know, you can write on the envelope received at, you know, if it was received at five o'clock on, right. then then the bid's rejected. But if it was received at 3.59 on Monday. Mm -hmm. Right, and mm -hmm. just print, a good print it out, put it in an envelope. And we open it. I think the key part is, we don't get the information advanced. I'm open it at the meeting. I won't share when we start this process. I won't share bids with anyone. That's uh, very smart on your part. Uh, but you should print them right away and put them in an envelope and put them with all the other physical. That way they don't get accidentally lost yeah. in the mail. Yeah. Put them in the envelope. Microsoft. Put them up. Put it on your desk. Go like this. Yeah. Jesus. I just hate this. <laughs> So my question is, why wouldn't we put this out and just make the sale contingent upon our receiving rate? I fully support that idea. Actually, we could just put it out with the dates on it right now. I don't care. We've been reassured twice by the road form that we would have our grader by that. And if it's a week or two. Well, he doesn't have any control. It has nothing to do with us. I kind of air with Evan on this one because I just I hate putting that clause in there because I think it makes people nervous. As, you know, I, in my work in the auction world, we'll do it all the time. We'll say, "Sorry, you can't have this forklift for a week because we need to run it." And, uh, and people get you get lower bids. People get nervous. Yeah, she might break it in the Right, and and I've had that happen. Well, if we have the clause in there that the select board has the right to reject them, uh, any, any bids, uh, if we don't have the grader by that time, I suppose we could reject any and all bids. Does it hurt that we don't push this out? Why do we have to put this out? Well, I think it just gives us a little more time. We're, we're coming up on, <laughs> coming up on the end of the we year. We do use it a decent amount over the winter. It helps a lot with uh, ice buildup. Excited about this oh. compact as a really excited. I mean, what what's the harm in holding it? I guess towns are trying to line stuff up for winter. 
Uh, that yeah. just was a really don't, don't, but I really don't care. Why hold it up? What do you What do you want to do, Beth? I don't care. I really don't care. I'm just asking what harm it is to hold it, but I really don't care. Hold it over the winter, or no? Hold it till we get our grader. Like, why would I don't understand why we need to put the RFP out before we get the grader at this point? But I mean, I'm just saying that well, you know how slow towns are to respond to things, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're like shooting for a. For six weeks from now, and some of them probably won't have enough time to get a bid together. Probably not. All right. Well, some of them might have to line up financing. I mean, it's, you know. First phase of our six. They might not have a okay, local fine. Fine, yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so is what are we deciding? I'm going to make a motion. I'm going to make a motion that with the changes that we put in there tonight, that we circulate this request for bid ASAP. Please have somebody in the office look this over to spell. Yeah, absolutely. Copy edit, spell check. Um, we have a motion. Do you have a second? I'll second it. So that's office review, or is like the chair? Gonna Mark seconded it. it. I'm not going to get office. Okay. Yeah, I've got a plenty of people who can review it. Okay, all those in favor, seek a favor, saying aye. Aye. Duncan, okay. you should, Beth, this is where you say aye, Duncan. I did? He did. Everybody said it all at once. It was perfect. He it was did. brilliant. His I did. did. I heard it. You know, I heard it. I did. Rosemary is making some of the deep voices over here. His lips that did not move. He's a big purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> threw my voice across it. You thought it. Threw my voice you it, right? Yeah. It's an action if you think it. So <laughs> apologies for derailing us a little bit, but are we good with these dates? Yeah. November Rosemary 25th. does have a point about it is going to be a little difficult for somebody to get financing together. I think that they can do it. I don't think that this is too long, but you want to push it out? You want to say December 1st? That would give us a little more. Well, it's December 1st is not our meeting. Our meeting is December 8th. November 28th. We could have a special meeting. No, uh, December 5th. I don't know what special meeting. December, December 5th. 5th. Anything. All right. You got yeah, I was going to say, I, got I deer season too. It's coming up. Right. So. Yes. Things don't get done during deer season. I think deer season's already started. Well, bow and arrow. Yeah. One season. Next is speed. Okay. All right. So Economic development proposal team. review and selection. Executive session. Yeah. It's 934. I think we'd better really do these two. Uh, so did we get, uh, there were some indeed applications did we we do have some other applications um i gotta tell you i'm thoroughly underwhelmed by the proposals the um, conditions yeah. for downloading and using the resumes from indeed is that they are confidential resumes so, so we, we should treat them executive session yeah we should treat them like any other application for employment which means we wouldn't review them in open session Motion to enter executive session to Do discuss the evaluation of candidates for potential appointment as allowed by 1 BSA subsection 313 A3. Okay, second. second. Inviting Rosemary. Second. Yeah. Inviting Rosemary and Brian. Okay. Yes. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Uh, do we need a second one for this one or no? Uh, no. 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 Okay.